Grace and peace, brothers and sisters, grace and peace. Welcome to Risen with Christ Ministries, Born Again Israelite Ministries. Constantly preaching the things which concern the Lord Jesus Christ and the kingdom of God. Tonight we're dealing with again, right, we're going to deal with this issue that's pressing and because there's many things for you people to learn. Doomed are deceitful pastors. Warning at Pastor Dawa and Straightway Ministries. We're going to go look at conduct that is clearly defined in the scriptures that, that you're doomed for doing. If you practice this type of behavior, you're doomed. The Lord, we read about woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, but there's other conduct that man manifests that causes him to step under a woe. And when other, other translation, you see the word woe is doom, meaning you're destined for destruction. That's why Jesus Christ said he made it plain. And this is the condemnation. The light is coming to the world. And men love darkness rather than light, for their deeds were evil. Meaning when God is calling man to love and to righteousness and to brotherhood and to care and to faith and conversion, you have to manifest Christ in your life. And you can't be dishonest. You can't be deceitful. You can't pretend. And you cannot make merchandise of the people. Some things came to my attention this week that was that's shocking. And I want you to look at this and see what happens to people when they come in contact with a deceitful minister, a deceitful person. We're going to go look at this. Before I begin, I'm going to deal with this right here. Fair use. Let me deal with the fair use. Fair use disclaimer. On the copyright section 107, on the disclaimer, on the section 107 of the Copyright Act of 1976, allowance is made for fair use for purposes such as criticism, comment, news, reporting, teaching, scholarship, education, and research. Fair use is permitted by, let's be clear about this, fair use is committed by, let me put this right here, fair use is fair, fair use is a use permitted by copyright statute that might otherwise be infringing. Okay, so let's go look at this. This is the part two, absolutely. Now, let's begin. Can we get Jeremiah chapter 22, verse 13? The Lord Jesus Christ came into this world and made it plain. I'm coming to die, might as have life and have it more abundantly. The Lord knows that people are being taken advantage of, especially in the places they think that is a safe space. They think that they're comfortable. They think they find family. They think they find brotherhood. And this is where you're being taken care of. Take, take, this is where you're not being taken care of. This is where you're being taken advantage of. That's why the Lord told you, take my yoke upon you and learn of me. We're going to deal with this incident right here. I want to read Jeremiah 22, 13 and look at what it says right here. Woe unto him that buildeth his house by unrighteousness and his chambers by wrong, that useth his neighbor's service without wages and giveth him not for his work. Keep that in mind. It says, woe unto him that buildeth his house by unrighteousness and his chambers by what? Doing wrong. And useth his neighbor's service without wages. Meaning you call the person, you tell them that they're part of you, they're part of the brotherhood, they're doing it for the church. Now watch it, you're gaining money, but you're not paying the brothers for their work. That useth his neighbor's service without wages and giveth him not for his work. That is a sin before the living God and the Lord Jesus Christ. It was established as sin in the Old Testament. It was established as sin before Israel was taken to Babylon. So all these people making you volunteer your whole life and telling you that's, the, that's your service to God. They're binding heavy burdens and they don't lift them with a finger. Now, let me keep reading. Keep that in mind. Jeremiah 22, verse 14. That said, if I will build me a white house and large chambers and cut it to my windows and it was sealed with cedar and painted with vermilion, meaning he's the, he, he's the pastor and he living all good. But you got to donate all your substance to him. There's no scripture that tell you to do that. None. And we're going to show you how they're misusing Acts chapter 4. Okay? So inspiring faith, before they go, we go there, let me get these scriptures on, on the screen. And you know what? Let me, let, let me show you what, what's going on here. Okay? Let me show you. Let's put that there first. And then... We going to see that's why they, that's why they perverting this gospel of Christ. Let me get this for you one moment. One moment. Let's take a look at this. Let's go to let, let me get this for you. 18 1820. Let's see right here. One moment. 
let me see here. Okay. I want y'all to listen to this. Let me, let me read some of these scriptures first, okay? Woe to him that buildeth his town. Woe to him that buildeth his house by unrighteousness and his chambers by wrong, that useth his neighbor's service without wages. Now, I want to get my, let me get my Bible open over here so we can, we can close the chapter on how these men are perverting these scriptures. We're going to do it right now. Give me one minute. Let's go to Acts chapter 4. Let's go to Acts chapter 4 that's been misused by Pastor Dowell, R.G. Stair, um, John Alexander Dowie, how to use this scripture to extort the people's money. We're going to go to it right now. Acts chapter 4. I tell you, man. Acts chapter 4. We're going to start from verse 32. Let me share the screen. Bear with me one minute. Let me stop sharing this screen. Let me share this other screen one moment because you need to see this for yourself. I'm a, you, it's, it's so alarming what you're going to hear tonight. What you're hearing tonight is alarming. They turn people that are seeking God into slaves. We're going to look at it right now. Give it a minute. Okay. This is the scripture that they're using to tell people when you go into straightway ministries that you should sell all your possessions and give it to Pastor Dow. Sell everything and give it to him. This is what they're using. Okay. Let's take a look at this verse. Let's see what it's saying. Acts chapter 4, verse 32. Okay. One moment. Okay. Acts chapter 4. Let me make this larger. Okay. Let's wait for the screen to come. Okay. No, we didn't want the whole thing. One moment, one moment. We don't want you so large. Give it a minute. Okay, that's good. We're still, we're still getting large. Okay, let me shrink you. Inspiring faith. Can we get Acts chapter four from verse? Because since it's doing this right here. Acts chapter 4 from verse 32 to 37. Can we read that, please? And I'm going to put it, I'm going to put it big on the screen. That's it. Acts chapter 4, verse 32. And the multitude of them that believe were of one heart and of one soul. And neither said any of them that, that ought of the things which he possessed was his own. But they had all things common. And with great power gave the apostles witness of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus. And great grace was upon them all. Please note, and with great power gave the apostles witness of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great grace was upon them all. Neither was there any among them that lacked. For as many as were possessors of lands or houses sold them, and brought the prices of the things that were sold, and laid them down at where? Where did they lay them down? At the apostles' feet. And distribution was made unto every man according as he had need. And Joseph who by the apostles was surnamed Barnabas, which is by inter which which is being interpreted the son of consolation, a Levite, and of the country of Cyprus, having land, sold it and brought the money and laid it at the apostles' feet. So this was Barnabas that we're reading about right here. Okay, now we're going to come back. Give it a minute. Then we're going to go to Acts, chapter two. Inspiring faith. Can we get Acts chapter two? Acts the second chapter. And we're going to read verse, hmm, Acts chapter 2, verse 42 to 47. Acts chapter 2, verse 42 to 47. We're going to go, let's look at the verses that they're using first. Brothers and sisters, on this channel, we're going to provide you with scriptures that they miss you, the scriptures that they leave out of the conversation. Paul said, I've not shunned to declare unto you all the counsel of God. Paul also said, I've defrauded no man. I've corrupted no man. So let's understand this. People are coming, people in straight way. There's many videos of people saying that they were defrauded. They were taken advantage of. Now, let's look at this here. Is a minister, can a minister tell you to sell your house, your 401k, to get your social security and bring it to them? No, they cannot. They cannot use this Bible and do that. Paul was even said, I seek not yours, but you. That's what he said. What is my reward? I preach the gospel without charge. 
that I abuse not my power in the gospel. So Paul said that he would not abuse his power in the gospel. And any minister that has picked up this Bible and has abused his power into the, uh, in the gospel to take money from people, these are deceitful ministers. These are ministers of Satan. They are not anointed. God would not anoint somebody to take advantage of you. Israel, believing Gentiles, God does not anoint people to take advantage of other people. Come on. Acts chapter 2, 42. And they continued steadfastly. This is, after this is after Pentecost, after they were all filled with the Holy Spirit. And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship. First things first, the brothers and sisters were in the apostles' doctrine. They were not in Dowell's doctrine. They were not in R.G. Stair's doctrine. They, not, they were not in John Alexander Dowie's doctrine. They were in the apostles' doctrine doctrine within the instructions of peter and james and john they were in the teachings of the new covenant the teachings of the lord jesus christ they were in the teachings of the messiah they were not in mount sinai old covenant teachings no they were not but so the lord said let them hear moses and the prophets that was only until let them hear moses and the prophets but what did the lord jesus christ say see let's deal with the tricks they used Dawa tries to use the scripture, let them hear Moses and the prophets, so you're supposed to listen to the law of Moses. But what is the scriptures? What did Jesus say? Had you believed Moses, you would have believed me, for he prophesied of me. So Moses prophesied that when Jesus comes, you're supposed to hear that prophet. Matthew chapter 17 says, it says, hear ye him. Should we build three tabernacles? No. And then what the Lord said, this is, then the father came from heaven and said, this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. Hear ye him so first of all demonstrate way they are not in the apostles doctrine they're not under new they're not in the new foundation they are putting a yoke upon the neck of the disciples which our fathers were not able to bear they bringing people back under what under the mosaic law no we under the law of christ and in the law of Christ is all the discipline to instruct people for conversion and for godly living that's what the lord said we have the things that pertain to this life Okay, what did what does it say? Paul said, and what is my reward? Verily, then, when I preach the gospel, I'm I may make the gospel of Christ without charge that I abuse not my power in the gospel, that I abuse not my power in the gospel. So now let me put this scripture on the screen. Give me a minute. Because what you're seeing is the abuse of the power in of man talking about he's in power in the gospel. You see an abuse. That's what you're seeing. You see an abuse. What abuse? Okay, I'm gonna show you. We gonna I'm, I'm gonna give me one minute. What abuse? We're gonna show you abuse. Let me get this right here. Let me see. Okay. Give me a minute. Let me share this screen. Pause. Let me stop this right here. Abuse, not my power in the gospel. Okay, so let me finish reading. Wait, first, let me finish reading. Let me finish reading. Um, Acts chapter two. One minute. So, brothers and sisters, it's a lot here. I'm gonna try to do this in a timely manner. Let me see. What else did Paul say? Behold, the third time I am ready to come to you, and I will not be burdensome to you, for I seek not yours, but you. For the children ought not to lay up for the parents, but the parents for the children. So Paul said, Most gladly, therefore, I will spend for you. And I have spent for you and will spend for you. Now, let's go back to Acts chapter 2. And it says, and they continue steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship and in breaking of bread and in prayers. And fear came upon every soul and many wonders and signs were done by the apostles. Let's go. And all that believed were together and had all things common and sold their possessions and goods and parted them to all men, even as they had need. And they continued daily with one accord in the temple and breaking bread from house to house, did eat their meat with gladness and singleness of heart, praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord added to the church daily, daily, such as should be saved. Now, let's go back here. Look at the verse that they try to use. It says, and they having, so, and they having land sold it. So Paul, did Paul tell anybody to sell land? That's what I'm saying. When the Jerusalem church was established, just like when, remember when they were building the temple with David and Solomon's time, the people made a contribution for that work. After this contribution was made, this was not done again. This was not done again where people had to. So first of all, 
let me let me say this first. Nowhere does God say you should give somebody your whole paycheck. No scripture. None. In the Bible. But I'm going to tell you what it does say. It says, woe to him that billeth, woe unto him that billeth his house by unrighteousness and his chambers by wrong, that useth his neighbor's service without wages and giveth him not for his work. Give me one minute. Let's read. Let me get some points here. Let's let y'all see what's going on. What is really, what am I, what am I pointing out here? Um, let me share this screen. What is this? What in the world is this? What's going on here? Share screen. Okay. Okay. They're telling you that for you to fulfill your duty with God, you got to give Dowell all your, all your money and that he's the Moses of this generation. All a bunch of lies. All the tongue of Satan. We're going to look at this here. The Lord said, whosoever exalted himself shall be abased. And then when they start getting caught, they act like they're Elijah. They have two complexes. They think they're Elijah and they think they're Moses. They think they're in those places and they're none of them. Let's go. Okay, let me get this Chrome tab. It's fair use, okay? Fair use, fair use. Let's take a look at this. I want y'all to hear this. This is shocking. Let's see. Let me see. <laughs> no, sir. <laughs> but anyway, but... listen to this. Go straight up. I said that man using you. Okay. He is literally using you. Mm -hmm. And Ranger told him that too as well. Okay. Well, her. Y'all just listen. Listen to this. Uh, this is this is check. this is Dowell's meeting. This is Dowell's meeting. Talking about the sins of Rufus, but who did he learn these sins from? Let's listen. In my social security, I get for me mm -hmm. 200 to 250 dollars a month. How much do you give? Uh, I'm giving them right now um, 2200 a month, over 2200 a month. And you get 200 dollars a month? Yes, sir. For me. Buying the ice cream? <laughs> them right now, um, 2200 a month. Over twenty two hundred a month, and Ranger told him that too as well. Security, I get for me mm -hmm. two hundred to two hundred fifty dollars a month. How much do you? The get? man gets two hundred to two hundred fifty dollars a month. Listen to this. And how much does he give? Give. Um, I'm giving him right now um, twenty two hundred. And he's okay. giving them twenty two hundred. He has to turn in his twenty two hundred dollar check, and they gives him back two hundred. How much they giving him? They giving him two hundred and fifty dollars. Now, that was going to act like this is an isolated incident. That this incident is just done. This wickedness was only done by Rufus. Oh, we gonna show it tonight. That where did it come from? Hold on a minute. Let's get it right here. We gonna get it right here. We gonna get it right here. One minute. What minute we at? We're gonna go to. 1802. Let's go to 1802. Let's go to, you know what? Let's let's let's, let's let it play. Let it play. Over 2200 a month. And you get $200 a month. Yes sir. For me. Buy an Listen carefully. <laughs> no, see, now, now he makes it a joke. You see, he's acting like he's surprised, right? He knows about this scam. We're going to read about we're going to hear about it here. Watch the testimony by the time you get to this minute right here. Let's get to 20. Let me see right here. Let's jump for a second. Yeah. Because long as you know me, I've been telling you community is the goal, right? But because of the tyranny, I guess it got flipped. They tell you because they say community is the goal. Listen carefully. Flipped around, But because of the way that it's run, mm -hmm. this is another reason why the brothers was telling the offland brothers, get what you're going to get. Because we thinking that this was the model mm -hmm. of getting. Because we've heard you say at one point, you know, the community got twenty dollars at so, the very beginning. Listen, exactly. listen, listen, sure listen, listen. We've heard you say, "Listen carefully, brothers and sisters." Well, listen to this. At so, the very beginning, exactly. We sure did. So, this is another reason why the brothers was telling the offland brothers, "Get what you're gonna get." So, brothers that were not living in the community, they were telling the offland brothers. Hear what they were telling them: "Get what you get before you come on the land." 
I mean, get what you get before you come on this plantation. Get what you get before you come into this community because it ain't the same. It, it ain't no sharing here. You got to give up all. The, the scriptures of the kings of the Gentiles exercise lordship and they that in authority are benefactors. It shall not be so among you. So the people in authority are the ones, the Gentile rulers, when they're in authority, they take everything from the people and they suck the people dry. The Lord told his disciples, it shall not be so among you. So why is Dawel the benefactor? Listen to what the brother's saying here, please. There's another reason why the brothers was telling the offland brothers, get what you're going to get. Mm -hmm. Because we thinking that this was the model of getting. Because we've heard you say at one point, you know, the community got $20. We've heard you say at one point, the community got $20. Look at the one next to him. Look at him. Look at him. Look at the mean face. He's trying to intimidate the person. Look at him right there. Look, look, look at this. Look at Dowell acting like he don't know. But the brother put it in his face. We've heard you say, Pastor Dowell say, that the community, that men are getting $20. They're being treated like they're little children. How are you taking a whole man's check and giving him $20 and he has a family? Tell me how you're doing this. And you want to talk about the Christian churches. You want to talk about the wickedness of the Pentecostal and the wickedness of the Catholics. Even the wicked Roman Catholic Church didn't do this. You surpassed the deeds of the wicked, Dowell. You surpassed the deeds of the wicked. Let's look at this here. At so, the very beginning. Exactly. We sure did. So at one point, we wasn't okay. even getting that. We wasn't Listen getting to this. nothing. Listen to this. Again. And it came to $20. I want y'all to hear this. At one point, you know, the community got $20. I'm going to let you hear it. At so, the very beginning. Exactly. We sure did. So at one point, we wasn't even getting that. We wasn't getting nothing. Then it so he, he confirmed that he made the decree that the people in his community gets $20. Does he get $20? Do you get $20, Dowell? You giving men $20 of their own money? Now, brothers and sisters, when what was slavery then? Because a sharecropper's salary was one third of all that they generate. How are you in the church of Christ and you are allowing another man to give you $20 of your own money? You're not giving to God, you're giving to a con man. You're being finessed, you're being taken advantage of, you're being abused. They're making merchandise of you. This is not no godly community, this is a straight up cult. How are you giving? Your money and you're getting back twenty dollars. Oh, there's so many cases. Listen, you came to twenty dollars, and then it went up to fifty dollars. And now that since the business is is you know, first it was twenty dollars. You see, Dowell, because look 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 at the con man, Dowell. Look at him. Look at the con man. He know this is what he's doing, and he's mad. Or oh, the guy's bringing it out because first pin the tail on Rufus. No, but it came from you. This is your decree because he decreed that the people should get how much twenty dollars. And some of them, no money. Let's listen. Every now and then, we'll get $100. Mm -hmm. Every now and then, we get $100. Okay. But we was thinking that this is the way it was. This is the way it was. Why, why are you not responding to that? Because he set it up. This is a wicked man. This is a man that have no feeling. The man have no man that has no compassion. A man that looked at the word to make merchandise of his people. How are you giving a grown man with family Twenty dollars, man. How you doing that? Woe to him that buildeth his house by iniquity and his chambers by wrong, that useth his neighbor's service without wages and giveth him not for his work. Let's keep going. I'm not in the community anymore, but I was there five years. I had three jobs. I worked seventy-two hours a week. What? I said when I said I'm, I lived on the community for five years. I'm no longer there now, but I worked three jobs. Okay. I worked seventy-two hours a week. Mm -hmm. For the first couple of years, I got zero for allowance. Then we went to ten dollars. The guy said he worked three jobs, seventy-two hours a week, and um, for the first couple of years, he got zero money. Are you listening? And at, at the point when I left the community, we was finally getting twenty dollars uh, every two weeks. But I and when he left the community, he was getting twenty dollars every two weeks. This is past. This is straight way. You need to run. There should be buses. Leaving straightway, you are in a full satanic cult that has nothing to do with Christ whatsoever. 
The scriptures tell you what? If the foundation be destroyed, what can the righteous do? The foundation was corrupt. The foundation is, was a finesse and a con game from R.G. Stair, which goes back to John Alexander Dowie. This was all about abusing people from the beginning. That's what it was about. It was, it was not about care and love and community and brotherhood and every member seek not your own, but another person's wealth. This is all about the embellishing and the sumptuous living for Dao, for him. This is wickedness in clear form. I've never heard about this. I've seen this. Let me put this. Let me put the screen for a second. In one West. Okay. Here what they did. Here what they did. Here what the seven did. Here what the seven approved of. But who was over it? That wicked reprobate Lahab. Him. What they did to the brothers. They saw the brothers needed jobs. Okay. And they saw that a brother was um, selling oils and the oils that he was selling in SOT. He was, I'm just showing you a comparison. This happened in 91 already. They did this in Harlem where wicked leadership had the brothers move into houses and they were staying in barracks and giving all their money. They were selling oils. And then when they sold the oils, they got one third of the money for themselves. But out of the one third, they had to pay tight. So let's say you got 300, you sold $300 worth of oils. Then you got a hundred dollars. Then you got to pay your tights, which is what you're going to get. They take out the tights already. Now you got $90. Now you got to go to what? You got to pay your priest fund. And all the priests want to fund. So most people, what they did when they went and sold the oils, when they came back and went to class after work, they gave most of their money to the priest fund. That's what they did. They lived totally impoverished, like slave lives. This was done in 91 with men trying to act like we having all things common. But at the same time, that same wicked Lahab blaze Judah, him, the same one. Always looking for skiing with people. What did he do? He was wearing $1,000 boots. $1,000 boots. And the brothers that was working in the street, the brothers that was out in the cold, what happened? What, what happened to them? They didn't even have the proper footwear. They didn't have the proper jackets. They didn't have the proper hats. But the men that were over them was wearing $1,000 boots. That's why the Lord cut it down. Okay, and why am I mentioning it? Because he didn't repent. Because what happened in Blaze Judah is what happened in One West. He will, once he saw the people coming in, he's back to his old schemish ways. So I'm telling you, what's going on with Dao is the same spiritual wickedness that was done in One West and that's done in all cults is being done there. It's the same demons. It's the same temptation. It's the same narcissism. It's the same selfishness. It's the same coldness. It is the same. There's no difference. You know the tree by its fruit, right? Okay, and brother and sister, your fruit. Your fruit is not what? Your fruit is not farmland. When the Lord tell you about you shall know them by their fruits, it's not talking about farmland. No, it's not. It ain't talking about gardens. No, it's not. When God is talking about your fruits, John chapter 15, ye have not chosen me, but I have chosen you that you should go and bring forth fruit and your fruit should remain. Ye have not chosen me, but I have chosen you and ordained you that you should go and bring forth fruit and your fruit should remain. Joseph was a fruitful bow. Would it doesn't mean he had farmland? Is that what it means? That's not what it means. My soul desired the first ripe fruit in Micah 7. What is um, the Lord meaning? The fruit is the end stage of the seed's development. I mean, you're hearing the word out of heaven. You're hearing the word of God. Did you become godly? That's what it's telling you. It's not talking about you need to have um a, you need to have houses and land for you to be fruitful. You need to have followers for you to be fruitful. That is not what it's talking about. It's talking about Christ being formed in you. It don't say it said the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, long suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, tempest. It don't say the fruit of the spirit is land and cabbage and and okra and sheep and chickens. That is not what it says. Because you brought nothing into this world, it certainly ain't going to take nothing out. Yes, everybody should care for each other. Yes, everybody, as the scripture says, that let every man seek not his own wealth, but the wealth of another. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ. But it's not talking about you have, you can take somebody's whole paycheck. You being robbed. All of you in straight way have been robbed. We're going to listen to this. Listen to this for a second. Good jobs. When I, when I lived on the community, Listen, I worked please. Two hours every week. I got $10. The guy got $10. Yeah, because I wanted to up and in. This was the whole point of the foundations. 
right. we said we're going to do these Watch foundations. This. Everybody gave all. We do the foundations. Every single brother on my land, on our land, let me make sure I'm saying it correctly. Yeah, on say it the way land. it is. Say, say, it, say it on my land. Say it the way Adawa says it. My land, that's why Rufus had to get out of his house. Say it the way it is. Has their own credit card with an amount. Meaning allowance. The, you giving grown men allowances. Let's listen. Credit card. And they're told they can spend, but they obviously see that I monitor, but I know I got. Okay, so how is grown men, how are grown men living like this? Let's, let's look for a second. This is their fruit, meaning they picked up the Bible, they picked up the Bible, and this is the demonstration of the conduct and the life that they think they should be living. That's what they think, they, with the Bible in their hand. Listen. And Ranger told him that too as well. Watch. Well heard. Out of my uh, disability check and my social security, I get okay. for me mm -hmm. two hundred mm -hmm. to two hundred and fifty dollars a month. How much do you okay. give? Um, I'm giving them right now um, twenty two hundred a month, over twenty two hundred a month. Mm -hmm. And you get two hundred dollars a month. Yes, sir. For me, buy an okay. ice cream. Let's, let's get the rest. <laughs> no, let's get the rest. Let's get the rest. Come on, people. I mean, we're moving and stuff. Are you following? So that's why I said there's no longer no no straightway Georgia. I wouldn't recommend, I told y'all, Mother Zaza, I'm going to go ahead and say, Mother Zaza gives a little bit of money. Listen to month. this. Mother Zaza gives a little bit of money. Listen to what he's going to say here. Mother, That's why, why is he saying this? Because brother and sister, here's what happens. When you get to a point where you sin so much, your conscience ends up being seared with a hot iron. And when your conscience is seared with a hot iron, what ends up happening is this, when your conscience is seared. That means you feel no conviction about the wrong that you're doing, and then you're going to declare your sin like Sodom. You're not going to hide it. So this is a public display he put out because he don't see nothing wrong with this. He don't feel the pain of the people. He don't feel no conviction about what he's showing publicly. There's, there is no conviction that Mother Zaza, he says she gives a little bit of money. Let's see how much money does Mother Zaza give. Do y'all know how much she gets back? I'm going to tell you what she told me. Y'all know how much she gets back? She gives close to $2,000 every month. But you know how much she gets Mother Zaza gives $2,000 every month. How much she gets back? It's back every month. Zero. That comes straight from her mouth. Okay. Zero. So um, when you hear about... And I heard Ruf people got butter. When you hear about Rufus and these brothers, these brothers are in all wickedness and taking advantage of their people. I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you the links. I'm going to show you, but they don't understand they're standing in the world. I'm going to get this right here. While we do that, I'm going to get these other verses ready. Just listen, let me get the other verses ready for you. One minute. When I said, damn, that ain't the way it works here. Brother Vic, you in here? Yeah. Brother Victor, you work, right? Off land? Give them, give them the phone. I want to show y'all the, the way straightway really works. Rather than being told the way that it works. Brother Victor. Yes, sir. How long have you been how working off the land when you went back on the job? How long have you been How does straightway really work, Dowell? Uh, the job I'm at now, I've been working there since 2019, 2020. Before that, I stopped working a year because you told me to stop working. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. I was working a job maybe about a year. So all together, maybe about five years with a year break in between. Okay. Okay. All right. So you just gave me an offering yesterday or a couple of days ago. Yes, sir. Is that right? He yeah. said this, this brother just gave him an offering. Listen carefully, please. Yes, sir. Your whole paycheck. Yes, sir. Is that right? Did you get any? He just gave him an offering, his whole paycheck. Did y'all hear that? He just gave him an offering, his whole paycheck. Let's go. Yes, sir. Is that right? Yes, sir. Your whole paycheck. Yes, sir. Is that right? Did you get any back? No, sir. No, you didn't. Now, um, the next pay that you get, because you get paid every two weeks. Every week. You get paid every week? Every week. Okay, every week. So what do you do with the money? How do you usually give offerings? One week I get paid, I give you that check. The following week I get paid, I keep that check. The next week I get paid, I give you that check. The next week I get paid, I keep that check. And it's consecutive. Y'all hearing this? Watch. Did y'all hear that? 
Hold on. Now they oh. clapping. They clapping at abuse. They're clapping at abuse. How is another man taking your whole pay check? Oh, the next one you can keep. But I'm keeping, I keep two paychecks out of, look at the tax. Now remember in the old covenant, how much were the people obligated to give? 10%. We're not even under the old covenant of the tithing system. The, the, the cap of the contribution that was mandated to the people was 10%. How are you taking a man's whole pay check? That is the heart of somebody that's without feeling. That's the heart of a man that don't know God, that he's anointed by Satan. He's not called of God. He's not sent. And that's why he's so unfaithful. Where, where y'all getting this from? Hmm? Y'all listening? Y'all hearing this? Mm -hmm. What we hearing? Um, the next pay that you get, because you get paid every two weeks. Every week. You get paid every week. I was working a job maybe about a year. So all together, maybe about five years with a year break in between. Okay. All right. So you just gave me an offering yesterday or a couple of days ago. Okay. Yes, sir. Is that right? Yes, sir. Your whole paycheck. Yes, sir. Is that right? Did you get any back? No, sir. No, you didn't. Now, brothers and sisters, uh, can y'all show me a scripture that justifies you taking a man's whole paycheck? It is time that these well-organized preachers got called out for their unethical behavior and cruel conduct. It is time, in, in Indigo Salute, it is time that these well-recognized, these well-recognized preachers got called out for their unethical and cruel conduct. This is anti-Christ behavior. This is anti-love, anti-salvation. This is anti-Christ behavior. What he said? Brother, no. Brother, let me say this. Um, look at this. Look at this person said he gave an offering to the pastor, not the community. The law of the kings in Old Testament applies here. Brother, no. First of all, you're not under. That's why the Lord said, "I build in, I lay in Zion for a foundation, a, a what? A stone, a precious cornerstone. I Meaning, it's a whole new and living way, brother. So he. It, oh, so okay. You mix. You mix. You're saying this right? Mix. Show the law, so we can have this conversation. You justifying him. Because first of all, it's mandated for the people to give all. Okay, wait, let me listen. He we gonna let him. We gonna let him talk. Let me let him talk. Let me let him talk. Go ahead. Um, the next pay that you get because you get paid every two weeks. Okay. Every week. You get paid every week. Every week. Okay, every week. So, what do you do with the money? How do you usually give offerings? One week I get paid. I give you that check. The following week I get paid, I keep that check. The okay. next week I get paid, I give you that check. The next week I get paid, I keep that check. And it's consecutive. Y'all hearing okay. this? Okay, y'all listening? Did y'all hear that? Okay, let's go here. But anyway, this is... Yeah. I want y'all to hear, this is how communities are. Uh, uh, when we talk about we give all, we do give all. Okay. They want the brothers that. and sisters to give all. The are you listening to this? I know that if there's something more that they need, they know but, they but you are not the head of a man where you're controlling all their money. But anyway, this is a lie. This, but I want that scripture, Mick. I want, I want your scripture. This is how communities are. No, uh, brother. That is not how the church is set up. No. There's no scripture that tells you that. But then, so the first of all, this man is not an apostle. First of all, he's not sent. This man was sent by R.G. Steer. He's not a disciple of Christ. He's a disciple of R.G. Steer. If you go look at what R.G. Steer did, we're going to read it tonight. And he's a, he's a disciple of John Alexander Dowie. He's not a disciple of Christ. Look at the heartlessness. Let me see the comments. My goodness. Wayne said the devil incarnate means a person that has a devilish spirit in him. How are you clapping to a man that taking a paycheck knowing that no one owes Dowell a single cent? <laughs> Look at Philemon. How are you clapping to a man taking somebody's whole paycheck knowing that no, no one owes Dowell a single cent? Max said, at Mick, I think you're misguided and don't fully understand Dowell's teachings. He's a fraud. Let's see here. Daniel's chapter and verse. If you're coming up here to challenge, if you're coming here to have a conversation, I'm not saying, what are you saying, Mick? I'm not saying I'm justifying it. I'm saying that they live out of the law where 
where pastor is what? Say it, brother. Where pastor is king. I'm not saying it's right. Now, let me say this. Show me where David did that. Show me where David did that. Show me the law. Please be so kind. Okay, you say you're not saying it's right, but you're dealing with some reasoning. Huh? Let's see. PhD said we, he shows a reason to worry about the next generation. Make somebody's worried. Okay. I want to show you something here. Give me one moment. Let's go to this right here. Um, you're taking money from the widows. Right? You're taking money from the widows. Let me get let me get over here. One minute. One moment. <laughs> One moment. Let me stop this right here. Okay, this is still playing. Because you, brothers and sisters, after a while, they get so bold with it. After a while, they become so arrogant. After a while, they declare their sin like Sodom, as it says in Isaiah, and they hide it not. That's what they're doing now. That's what you're seeing. That's what's being done in front of us. They're not even hiding it, man. Did y'all know that? Did y'all know the straight with these Israelites that gave him man of the year? Y'all gave a man man of the year that was corrupting and deceiving and robbing people. And y'all gave him man of the year. Hmm? Hmm? Tell me what that's all about. Um, let me get this scripture here first. Give me one minute. Um, Jeremiah. Let me get this here. 22. No, let's let's see this. Give me a minute. Okay. Share this tab instead. Okay? Let's see. Jeremiah 22. Okay, let me scroll this up. Jeremiah 22, verse 13. Um, okay, Jeremiah 22, verse 13. We're going to show this tab, share this tab instead. In Jeremiah 22, verse 13, here it is right here. On the left-hand side is the KJV. The right-hand side is the Amplified. You see that right there? Okay, good. Jeremiah 22, 13 in the Amplified, it says what? It says, Woe, judgment is coming to him who builds his house by acts of unrighteousness and his upper chambers by injustice, who uses his neighbor's service without pay and does not give him wages for his work, who says, I will build myself a spacious house with large upper rooms, men outside living in tents, and cut it out. Why? I mean, you good, but they ain't good. And panel it with cedar and paint it with vermilion, meaning back then the Lord was showing you the kings was benefiting and the people were living in poverty. Now, give it one minute. Give it a minute. Let me get this right here. So that's what it says in that version. I want to show you another version. Okay? That's the Amplified. Let's get, let me see right here. Yes, one moment. Let's get the GNT version. Let's get GNT. Let's see here. Let's see. They have the GNT right here. Let's see. GNT. Okay, let's see GNT. GNT version, Jeremiah 22, verse 13. Doomed is the one who builds his house by injustice and enlarges it by dishonesty, who makes his people work for nothing and does not pay their wages. Again, doomed is the one who builds his house by injustice and enlarges it by dishonesty, who makes his people work for nothing and does not pay their wages. Doomed is the one who says, I will build myself a mansion with spacious rooms upstairs. So he puts windows in his house and panels it with cedar and paints it red. Let's get another version. It's all dishonesty. Inspiring faith. Can you get second Corinthians, please? Let me give you another one. That's the good news version. Let's take a look at the MSG. Let's take a look now. Let's just read this. Here we go. 
Some people find it easier to read these versions. Jeremiah 22, verse 13. What does it say here? The MSG is on the left-hand side, amplified on the right. Doomed to him who builds palaces but bullies people, who makes a fine house but destroys lives. Again, doomed to him who builds palaces but bullies people, who makes a fine house but destroys lives, who cheats his workers and won't pay them for their work. That's why he had he has on his channel, Dawa has on his channel that what? That you should do what? That that Rufus should have kept his mouth shut and eat the crumbs that Dawa throws at his, at his feet. Let's read this again. Doomed to him who builds palaces but bullies people, who makes a fine house but destroys lives, who cheats his workers and won't pay them for their work. So it's a sin before God for somebody to be working for you and you don't pay them who cheats his workers and won't pay them for their work, who says, I will build me an elaborate mansion and drive um, SUVs and trucks with spacious rooms and fancy windows. I put, I'll put in rare and expensive woods and the latest in interior decorate so that makes you a king living in a fancy place. Your father's got along just fine, didn't, didn't he? He did what was right and treated people fairly. All things went well with him. He stuck up for the down and out and things went well for Judah. Isn't this what it means to know me? God's decree. So when you do righteousness and love and care for people, that's what it is to know God. But above, when you cheat your workers and won't pay them for their work, who says, I will build me an elaborate mansion and spacious rooms and fancy windows. But what are you doing right there? And you bullying people. God said, woe to him that builds palaces, but bullies people who makes a fine house, but destroys lives. Who cheats his workers and will pay them for their work and lie and tell them that you, this is your duty to God. You being you, you robbing the people. What does it say in what is it saying, James? The hire of your laborers are kept back by fraud. So it's all fraud. Let's go. Who says I will build me an elaborate mansion with spacious rooms and fancy windows? Let, let's go. Let's is this another? Let's get the NET version now. Let's go. Let's get the NET version. Okay. Tap that right there. Let's get the NET. Okay, let me see. Um, you know which one we can look at right here? The GNT Amplified NET MSG. Okay, here we go. Oh, which one is this right here? Let me see. Doom to him who builds palaces. Okay. Okay, and let's look at the MSG for one second. Let's see something here. At 13, there's something else here. Let's see here. There's something I missed. Let's see here. Oh, yeah. Look what it says here. But you are blind. Look right here. But you're blind and brainless. All you think about is yourself taking advantage of the weak, bulldozing your way, bullying victims. All you're doing is taking advantage of the weak, bulldozing your way, bullying victims. What did Milk say? Then all the elders of Israel gathered themselves together and came to Samuel and Ramah and said, Behold, thou art old. Go ahead. You want to go there, Mink? You want to you wanna go? Let's go there. You want to go? Okay, look, let me help. Let's help. Because I'm here to help. I'm going to help. Let me read this first and I'm going to help. Okay, Mick? Give me a minute. Let's help. Doom to him who builds palaces but bullies people. You see this right here? Who makes a fine house but destroys lives, who cheats his workers and will pay them for their work. This is Bible. Who says, I will build me, this is the MSG version, who I will build me an elaborate mansion. I mean, I'm going to be good and spacious rooms and fancy windows. I'll put in rare and expensive woods and the latest in interior decorate. I'm going to tell you, I've seen this already. I remember, right, that reprobate Lahar from Blaze Judah, when the brothers took the buildings on 126th Street. I'm going to tell you what he did. Okay, the sister that was a warrior that, that was in the Montel Williams show that was talking, the sister that was in there, that was his wife. The brothers were living in a cubicle, like a prison side, a, a prison side cell. Two, a bunk on one side, a bunk on the other side. I'm just showing you an example. They had a bunk on one side with two men slept in, another bunk on the other side. Okay? They built the bunks. Here's what they did. On one floor had eight men. This is what they did in 1991. On one floor had eight men. 16 men on one floor with one bathroom. But what did Lahab do? He gave his wife a whole floor where she had two apartments. You get what I'm saying to you? Meaning men that's entitled 
what they do, they take care of themselves and leave the other brothers that they feel that are inferior to suffer. This is sin according to Jeremiah. This is sin according to God. This has always been sin because it ain't, it ain't never been love. It ain't never been care. It ain't never been godly. It ain't never been faith. Okay, and I'm going to go over there. I'm going to go. So I'm showing you, I've seen this scam run in the 90s already that Dowell is running. It's an old scam that he's running. Okay? The brothers in One West, they know all about the scam with, with the buildings. They know about it. They did this to the brothers back then. And then even when they worked, they made them get sack day. You know, a sack day, a day where the men worked and were not paid. It was a woe unto them. That's doom. What kind of, what did the Lord say to these men? Look at right here. It says, Jeremiah 22, it said, your father's got along just fine, didn't he? He did what was right and treated people fairly and things went well with him. He stuck up for the down and out and things went well for Judah. Isn't this what it means to know me? God's decree, but you're blind and brainless. All you think about is yourself taking advantage of the weak, taking advantage of the weak bulldozing your way, bullying victims. Tell me that's right. I want anybody to tell me that when you take advantage of the weak, people that don't really understand, they weaken the faith, they don't understand the scriptures, you're taking advantage of widows, you're taking their money. How is that righteousness in any time? Max said, this, type of, this is type of manipulative treatment of people. This is type of manipulative treatment of people are nauseating. It shows no fear of God. Okay. Okay, but brother, um, remember God said this, I gave you a king in my anger and took him away in my wrath. Remember that scripture, brother? God said, I gave you a king in my anger and took him away in my wrath. And then it said all the kings of Judah were defective. Remember that scripture. You can't leave that out, brother. Hmm? Because when Israel asked for a king, they rebelled against God. We have to we have to keep everything in context. Mick, come on, do we have to do that? We have to keep everything in context. Okay. Okay. Let's go to Habakkuk now. Let's stop this right here. Let me go back here. There's something else here. Oh, you know what? Let's go over here. Let me see. Give me one second. Let's get this right here. One moment. Okay. Let me see. Give me one moment. Okay, here this is right here. I'm going to show y'all something else. Let me share this tab instead. Listen to this. This is a meeting. I don't ever. Okay. This is a meeting, okay? This is a meeting. This is a meeting, okay? That when a brother, when, when one, of their, one of their members by Eric, named Eric Robinson, he left, okay? You see the timestamp right there? 1631. So you can go look it up. After he left, listen to this. This is, watch this. I called myself, they were saying I'm the Moses of this generation. You never said that. Oh, yeah. but, but anyway, he, um, um, and that was one of the allegations and stuff. Well, many people have. Go ahead, Elvin. Many, many people feel that. They see that level of anointing. He said he don't remember calling himself the Moses of this generation. Look at how he lying to the people. You just said last, we played it last week that you said Moses ain't here, Dawel is here. And this guy right here, him, this one right here, is the one that told Eric. He told Eric that. We're going to show it. We're going to show it. I don't remember. Look what he said. I don't remember what? I don't ever recall myself ever saying I'm the Moses of this generation. You never said that. Oh, yeah. but, but anyway, he... Um, okay, let's uh, stop that. Let's stop that for a second. Let's stop that. Let's stop it for one second. We got to stop it for one moment. Let's stop it. Let's stop it for one second. Let me see right here. Listen. Let's listen. He believed and he communicated to me that Pastor Dow was the Moses of this generation and that we should come underneath him. This of this generation and that we should communicate to me that Pastor Dow was the Moses. He believed and he communicated to me that Pastor Dow was the Moses of this generation 
He believed and he communicated to me that Pastor Dowell is the Moses of this generation. And that we, Pastor Corey disagreed with that decision. Totally his right. Meaning he, what the brother was saying right here, right? When he said, he dis, Corey disagreed with this man right here, Eric Robinson, with how he was moving. He was moving. He said, I'm not coming under Dowell. He, he was questioning what they were doing. Now watch he this disagreed with the clip here. He believed and he communicated to me that Pastor Dowell, he believed and he communicated to me his right. He believed and he communicated to me totally his right. He believed and totally his right. He made that decision. Totally his right. He Corey disagreed with that decision. Totally okay. his right. What did Corey disagree with? Corey disagreed. We're gonna go to let's just go to the clip. Let's just go to it. You know what? Let's go to the clip right here. Let me get it for you. 12807. Moses of this generation. Let's go to it. Corey, I want it to be in context. I don't want nobody to misunderstand. Um, let's get it. Uh give me a minute. Because I don't like that clip. It's not very clear. So Let me get it for you. Give me one minute. See the video is called I Left Ya. One minute. I Left Man. Eric Robinson. Okay. 128. Okay. Let's get it. Give it a minute. Okay, get you over here. 127, let's see here. Okay, let me see. Okay. Okay, let's share this tab instead. And am I going to do Pentecost with him? And I said before he hang, hung up, I just am like, I have got to tell him. I just can't. I got to tell him because I won't. Well, I'm not going to go into other situations that he had with other men, but other men just didn't talk to him. And I thought, you know, Pastor Corey and I did talk before. You know, I did go visit his congregation more and I, I just felt I needed to tell him. And so I told him, I said, you know, pastor, that I have separated from straightway. I'm no longer underneath their banner. They don't represent me. I don't want to represent them, but I would like to see us work in unity together in the future. Pastor Corey disagreed with that decision. Totally his right. He believed and he communicated to me that Pastor Dowell is the Moses of this generation. Do you hear that? Did y'all hear that? Y'all heard it, right? That pa Pastor Co Elder Co Pastor Corey told him that Mo right. he believed and he communicated to me that Pastor Dowell is the Moses of this generation, and that we should come underneath him. I told Pastor Corey that's that same, he that's said to me that I should go to Pastor Dowell. That's the same thing Masha said. He thought he was the Moses of this generation. Many men thought they were the Moses of this generation. Um, you but this is part. This is part of the esoteric knowledge that they say in secret that y'all that are supporting straightway, you're trying to say that this guy, this man is not Moses because in Moses said, who's here now? We have the Lord Jesus Christ. He's the mediator. You need to understand that. Let's go. Uh, and I said, pastor Dow himself said what I told you guys earlier and what you have heard. Many of you that to leave and leave quietly, we don't need to hear your parting words. Pastor Corey acknowledged that Pastor Dow did indeed speak those words. But respectfully, Pastor Corey said, even that being so, I still think you should go talk to him. You see the madness? Look at the madness. Now look at the madness. Let me see something here, 4430. One minute. Let's keep moving though. Now, yes, I began to have my disagreements with leadership style that Straightway has. I began to see because he was making videos on Patreon and things began just to line up for me. 
of making statements that, that he is the Moses of this generation, that he is the only man of Yah in this generation. Now you might be like, well, that doesn't make sense because he ordains pastors. Didn't he not ordain you a teacher? And there can be Caleb's and there can be elders. Let's keep moving though. Now, yes, I began to have my disagreements with leadership style that straightway has. I began to see. It's probably, can we get Galatians chapter six, verse three and Romans chapter 12, verse three. Because he was making videos on Patreon and things began just to line up for me. Of making statements that that he is the Moses of this generation, that he is the only man of Yah in this generation. Now you might be like, well, that doesn't make sense because he ordains pastors. Didn't he not ordain you a teacher? Yes, there can be Joshua's and there can be Caleb's and there can be elders, but there's only one Moses. And this was statements made by him that there's only one Moses in a generation and that he exactly. was that figure that Yah is using. And so I began to see, oh, okay. Okay, so, okay, brother and sister, so you see what you're dealing with? Inspiring faith, can you put the word psychosis? Satan gave this man a strong delusion to believe a lie. He believes he's the Moses of his generation. This is the one, Eric, okay? Now, we're going to go here, give it a minute, and then we're going to get back to all our classes, okay? I want to show y'all something here. I want to show you something here. This is Rufus. Listen, share this tab. And the reason you don't want to receive their money, you don't want to be held accountable by this. Yeah, old Corey. And the reason you don't want to receive their money, you don't want to be held accountable by this. You don't want to be held accountable. Because the book money, you don't want to be held accountable by this. Deal with your headache. I saw one thing a while ago, him saying in some video, how he don't want to receive their money. Give the same guy we just talking about, Eric Robinson, he said he didn't want to receive the money. Listen to this. Listen to this. This is Rufus talking right here. This is Rufus talking about Eric Robinson when he left. Okay? Listen. Or do this. Man, shut up. That dumb stuff. You ain't old Corey. Mm -hmm. And the reason you don't want to receive their money, you don't want to be held accountable by this. Mm -hmm. You want to be held How he don't want to receive their money. Give it. So. In disobedience. You getting rebellious. You okay. getting folk that don't want to submit. Mm -hmm. Okay, he was they was upset with Eric Robertson because he was questioning their teaching. Now listen what he listen what Rufus is gonna say. Rufus got a lot of repenting to deal with. Listen to this. That's what you did. So deal with your headache. Deal with your headache. I saw one thing a while ago. Him saying in some video. I saw one thing a while ago. Him saying him saying what? Let me put the closed caption on. What would he? What did he say, Rufus? How he don't want to receive their money. Give it to the he don't want to receive their shut money. Up. He don't want to receive their money. He told them what? Shut up. See, this is all a hustle. This is all a scam. You listening? Uh, him saying in some video how he don't want to receive their money. Give it to the poor. Do this. That. Man, shut up. That dumb stuff. You ain't old Corey. Mm -hmm. And the reason you don't want to receive their money. So this is what they about. This is what they about. You see all the elders here. All of them here, this is all a scam. You want to be held accountable. That he, their reasoning, that the reason why he don't want to receive the money is because you don't want to be accountable. All, these are all criminals in the gospel. These are all criminals. That you should be taking the money, man. Take the money. I saw a problem with him. He didn't want to take the money that we were robbing the people from. We were unjustly getting, that we were bullying the people. I saw a problem with him. He didn't want to take the money. You see this? This is the work I'm doing. Am I not worthy of your material good? Am I not No, you're not worthy, man. No, nope. because you're not Paul. You're not apostle. You're not clean. You're not sanctified. You're not upright. No. And see, what, what Dawu did, he ordained his own men. But the scripture said promotion cometh neither from the east nor from the west. But God is judge. He put it down one and set it up another. What Dawu did, Dawu put laid his hands and gave men his spirit. So if you disagree, so they all in agreement with his spirit. But you brothers ain't in agreement with the Bible. The whole foundation of straightway is the foundation of Satan. The whole foundation. It's abuse. It's hireling. It's about money. Look, the God didn't want to take the money. Okay. Okay, so we got that from Rufus. Okay, let's go back here. Let's go back here. Let's go back here. 
Let's go back here. Um, fifteen nineteen. Let's see. Give it a minute. Give me one minute. Um, fifteen nineteen. We're going back. So, when Eric Robinson left, yeah, you th exactly. Look what his brother said. What does Dawa give? Okay. So Rufus was all part of this. Okay. Now listen to this right here. This is fifteen nineteen. Let me see here. Okay, here we go. Okay, let me share this tab. I'm the face of the deck building business mm -hmm. at for Georgia. And Vincent can corroborate this. We're about to finish a job tomorrow, but the guy is saying he's the face of the deck building business, the business that was that Rufus was in charge of. This is one of the guys speaking in the meeting with Georgia, the Georgia Saints. In the last three days, I put mm -hmm. six thousand dollars in this man's hands. Okay, so he's saying in the last three days, put this up. We got he put six. He put six thousand dollars in the hand of who? In the hand of. Let me let you put, hear it again. Listen. Finish the job tomorrow, but in the last. Three days, I put six thousand dollars in this man's hands, mm -hmm. and we got fifty dollars. Put this up, week. Week. We got fifty dollars last week, and then I guess the the boost of morale, we got a hundred dollars this week. But after tomorrow, I'm gonna get about another three thirty five hundred. Chef, I'm keeping that money, and I'm gonna do with it. So you hear what he said happened? Listen, what he said happened? Because sometimes, brothers and sisters, things are moving fast. You gotta grasp what he's explaining here. He's, he's, in the, the he's in the meeting, right? He's in the meeting. Dawood is trying to use the meeting as if that Rufus is the only villain. No, they were both villains. Listen carefully. Tomorrow. But in the last three days, I put $6,000 in this man's hands. So he's a face of the deck building business. And in the last three days, he, he gave $6,000 to Rufus. Listen carefully. And we got $50. Put this up. We got $50 last week. And then I guess the, the boost them around. And the grown men, grown men was giving, grown men were being given $50 wages. Grown men were being given $50. Are we listening? Are we listening? For a week's work. <laughs> now we got $100 this week. But and, okay. after tomorrow. So the week before. They got a fifty dollars and then a hundred dollars this week. Okay, go ahead. Get about another three thirty five hundred. Chef, I'm keeping that money, and I'm gonna do with it. What I you expect y'all to what you do. I'm gonna do what so, you tell me to do with it. Keep the, you're right now. You're, right now, y'all just keep the money because we got a lot of moving around. We're gonna need. Okay, to but see how the brothers are being used. So, brothers and sisters, this is what I'm saying, right? You have to seek you out of the book of the Lord and read. There's no biblical instructions, man, that that operate that give you this. that gives you the authority to do that to people. That's why we read doomed. That's why we read this right here. Let me hit the word escape. Let's go back to this right here. Let's share this tab. That's why we said doomed to him who builds palaces, but bullies people who makes a fine house, but destroys life. Jeremiah 22, 13, 22, 13 in the MS, in what? Which version are we reading from? This is in the message version, MSG, okay? We're going to read it here. Look what, but because I want y'all to see this, look. Doom to him who builds palaces, but bullies people, who makes a fine house, but destroys lives, who cheats his workers and won't pay them for their work who says, I will build me an elaborate mansion with spacious rooms and fancy windows. I will bring in rare and expensive woodmen. They making sure that they all right, that they good. So this is the old sin in Jerusalem. So they're not doing exactly this, but meaning they're the benefactor. Let's go ahead. All things went, your father's got, a, your father's got along just fine, didn't he? He did what was right and treated people fairly and all, and things went well with him. He stuck up for the down and out. Didn't yeah, we read about they were taking $2,000, Rufus, taking over $2,000 from a widow and not giving her no money. This is what they're alleging. This is their testimony about their operation. And things went well for Judah. Isn't 
this, what it means to know me, meaning what? You got to treat people fairly. You got to stand up for the down and out. Isn't this what it means to know me? God's decree. But you're blind and brainless. All you think about is yourself. Taking advantage of the weak, bulldozing your way, bullying victims. Taking advantage of the weak, bulldozing your way, bullying victims. It's fine. Can you grab that version? That's the MSG version. And then we can, let's get back to this. Let's get back. Yeah. That one in his own mouth said, Moses. So let's let's just let's just look at this, okay? Oh yeah, you have it. Oh, you have it already, okay? Amen. Amen. So, brother and sister, when you see these things, when you see these things, you have to see what happens, right? My people are destroyed for the lack of knowledge because people take advantage of you. That's why. Let me get here. Let me stop this right here. Stop this sharing, and then we're gonna go. Let's go into the word. Let's go into the word. Let's go into the word. One minute. Let me just make this this little shorter. Okay. Let me stop this. Share screen. All right. Okay. It's coming up. Good to go. All right. We we moving up. All right. Let's go. Y'all ready? Um, let's deal with this. Let's go to Habakkuk chapter two, verse nine. Let's go to Habakkuk two and nine. Habakkuk chapter two, verse nine. What does it say here? Woe to him that coveted an evil covetousness to his house, that he may set his nest on high, that he may be delivered from the power of evil. Thou hast consulted shame to thy house by cutting off many people and has sinned against thy soul. When you take this method, when you take this method of getting money, you coveting an evil, that, that money don't belong to you. It belongs to the people. They work for it. But God said, woe to him that coveted an evil covetousness to his house, that he may set his nest on high, that he may be delivered from the power of evil. So meaning he want to make sure he's secure. Same thing that, same thing that R.G. Stair did, same thing that John Alexander died, we did with Zion, Illinois, you can, Canada, South Carolina. These are all men that were lunatics. Let me, these are all men that had a psychosis. Let me read the word psychosis. Psychosis is a mental disorder characterized by disconnection from reality. This is a severe mental disorder in which thought and emotions are so impaired that contact is completely lost with external reality. They perceive or interpret reality in a very different way from people around them. It might be said to lose touch with reality. The most common types of psychotic experiences are hallucination, delusions, and disorganized thinking and speech. What is being said is not logically sensible or necessary. So they're in a disconnection with reality. This person may have false beliefs about what is taking place or who one is. They have confused and persistent disturbed thoughts. A psychosis is a condition of the mind that results in difficulties determining what is real and what is not real. So these men are going in their mind. In their mind, they have persistent disturbed thoughts. They feel it, that they're entitled to the people's money. That's how they feel. Now, this brother pulled 1 Samuel chapter 8. So we're going to help, right? He pulled 1 Samuel chapter 8 and... Uh, um, verse four. And it came, let's start from one. And it came to pass when Samuel was old that he made his sons judges over Israel. Now the name of the firstborn was Joel and the name of the second Abiah and they were judges in Beersheba. And his sons walked not in his ways but turned aside after Lucre and took bribes. Lucre meaning what? Dishonest money. Same thing that they doing in straight way. And took bribes and perverted judgment that all the elders of Israel gathered themselves together and came to Samuel and said unto him, Behold, thou art old, and thy sons walk not in thy ways. Make us a king to judge us like the nations. But this thing, but this thing displeased Samuel when they said, Give us a king to judge us. And Samuel prayed unto the Lord. And the Lord said unto Samuel, Hearken unto the voice of the people in all that they say unto thee, for they have not rejected thee, but they have rejected me, that I should not reign over them according to all the works which they have done since 
the day that I brought them up out of the land of Egypt, even unto this day, whereby they have forsaken me and served other gods, so do they also unto thee. Now, therefore, hearken unto their voice, howbeit yet protest solemnly unto them and show them the manner of king that shall reign over them. We're not in the era of these kind of kings. Christ is king. So let me get this verse. Where's this brother? He wanted the scripture. Let me see where you at, brother. Mick. Where's Mick? Because Mick, you went to this scripture, but this scripture does not justify that action. Yeah, it said, yeah, they pretended, Mick, they pretended to have everything shared as they did in the New Testament when they were gathering everything under one man's name. There you go. That's all wickedness. Okay. Now, let me get you this over here. Let me get you this over here. One moment. We want to go through something here. One moment. One moment. There's more. Okay. Give it a minute. Let me get it for you. Um, where are you, my dear brother? Let me go to his page. This is the brother James Plant, an ex-member, and he's going to explain what happened. Okay, here's another testimony. Many witnesses. Eric Robinson's a witness. Let me share this page. Okay, let's stop sharing this here. Okay, one moment. Share screen. Here we go. Mm-hmm. Which one we want here? Okay, here we go. Okay, it's coming. Y'all ready? Here we go. Let me take this off. Okay, fair use, fair use. Okay, let me make this bigger. Give it a second. All right, let's deal with this. This is a brother that was a former member. He left, okay, in 2015, okay? But there's certain parts of his testimony that you can, that I, I want to just discuss. Um, let's go to the third minute, 30 seconds. Let's go here. As a matter of fact, let me see. Let's go here first. So we touch this money issue. Y'all ready? Here we go. Money he gives you? <laughs> Check this out. At a family of four, money he gives you? <laughs> Check. Money he... <laughs> what you get? How much money he gives you? <laughs> Check this out. <laughs> what you get? How much money he gives you? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Check this out. At a family of four. Family of four, mind you. A month, we would get a hundred bucks. Are y'all listening? He said he had a family for a month. He was getting a hundred dollars from Dawo. Listen. Now, mind you, we had to buy four meals with this because every Friday they didn't have, they didn't serve food in the dining hall. This is 2015. So you have to supply four meals for yourself for the month. Any type of clothes, any products you need, anything like that came out of that money. That's what you had for a family of four. That's what I got. A hundred dollars a month. Hmm. Okay, so he's showing what was really going what happened. He was getting how much? A hundred dollars a month. That's what he was getting. Y'all listening to this? Okay. The brother discuss the script, pull the scripture right here. And that's first Peter chapter five, verse five. Now, this is the reason why the standard is so important. So you can identify who's ungodly. First Peter chapter five. Let's start from verse one. The elders which are among you, I exhort, who am also an elder and a witness of the suffering of Christ and also a partake of the glory that shall be revealed. Feed the flock of God, which is among you, taking the oversight, not, for, not by constraint, 
but willingly. Not for filthy lucre, meaning you cannot set up scams with the people. Not for filthy lucre, not for filthy lucre, but of a ready mind, neither as being lords over God's heritage, meaning you're not in control of their money. You're not in control of all their assets. Not as being lords over God's heritage, but being in samples to the flock. You have to be an example of how to live to the flock. And when the chief shepherd shall appear, ye shall receive a crown of glory that fadeth not away. Likewise, ye younger, submit yourselves unto the elder. Yea, all of you be clothed with, yea, all of you be subject one to another and clothed with humility. For God resisteth the proud and giveth grace to the humble. Humble yourself, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time, casting all your care upon him, for he careth for you. Okay, so we got that. Let's go back here now. What were you giving? What did he? What did he give to you, brother? Say that again. There's no compassion. There's no love. <laughs> it's beat you down, beat you down, lose your voice. He controls everything you do. There's no compassion. There's no love. <laughs> there's no compassion. There's no love. <laughs> there's no compassion. There's no love. There's no compassion. There's no love. <laughs> it's beat you down, beat you down, lose your voice. He controls everything you do, everything, your okay. family, <laughs> what you get, how much money he gives you. <laughs> Check this out. I had a family of four, family of four, mind you. A month, we would get a hundred bucks. Now, mind you, we had to buy four meals with this because every Friday, they didn't have, they didn't serve food in the dining hall. So you would have to supply four meals for yourself for the month. Any type of clothes, any products you need, anything like that came out of that money. That's what you had for a family of four. That's what I got. A hundred dollars a month. Hmm. Yeah. When I got there, he preached all things common. How I found out fast, <laughs> that wasn't the case for everybody. <laughs> not at all. Definitely not for him. Definitely not for him. That's what I got to say about that. Definitely not for him. It's not all things common. That, no. That's a flat out lie, all things common. Maybe with everybody else, yes. With him, no. No. So the congregation... Maybe keeps the congregation all things common with them but with dowel everything is for him so brother and sister you need to know when somebody's ripping people off and this was going on i know a sister um there's another church there's a church here in brooklyn and she told me that they took her for a quarter million dollars they would always come to her and tell her when there's an emergency in the church the church needs help and she wrote checks forty thousand fifty thousand sixty thousand for the church right and when she lost all her money right they abandoned her this is a common operation and a scam that's going on, going on with people that's claiming to be spiritual. This kind of conduct sets a terrible example for young people who are seeking and curious about the gospel. We are meant to act as representatives to share the spirit of God, not self-proclaimed leaders. The kind of conduct sets a terrible example for young people who are seeking and are curious about the gospel, we are meant to act as representatives and share the spirit of God, not to be self-proclaimed leaders. Dawah is pretending to be what? To be the king of a jungle. Okay, let's go. Let's, let, me, let me show you. The, now, here's the love bombing. You ready? Here's how he lures everybody. Wait, wait, it said with their mouth, if their mouth, remember the Lord said, his words were smoother than butter, but war was in his heart. Mm. Though he speak fair. There's seven abominations in his heart. Let's go right here. Let's take a look here. How did they get the brother? Watch. Me and my family did for almost that whole time. We, we barely stayed any time in Georgia. Okay. Pastor Rufus never lived on the land. I did. Pastor Rufus didn't live on the land. He's talking about in the, at the hub. Go ahead. My family did for almost that whole time. We, we barely stayed any time in Georgia. This is how it went. We moved down there to Georgia. We all shared the house. We would go to Straightway. 
on on the Shabbats. And um, well, pastor knew that I'm good at building or, you know, I got experience in it. You know, I've done it my whole life. So I, you know, I've got skills in them areas or whatever. Well, once he seen how I was good at it, he sent for me and my family to move to straightway. We weren't there very long. Maybe, a, I don't know, exact time frames. So he was in no. Georgia and I was sent for him to move to, to Tennessee, to the hub. Because he had skills that could benefit Dowell. Okay, let me see what's going on here. Okay. Being on the land is. Pastor Rufus never lived on the land. Brother Wayne said what? I exactly. Brother Wayne, family. exactly. Right. And he said unto them, it is written, my house shop, my house will be called the house of prayer, but you have made a den of thieves. I mean, they, they use, they're in the Bible to opportunity to rip people off and to take their money. So what you found at Straightway, all their different groups, is a den of thieves. These are the people testifying against their own elders. Okay. We did for almost that whole time. We, we barely stayed any time in Georgia. Okay. This is how it went. We okay. moved down there to Georgia. Mm -hmm. We all shared the house. We would go to Straightway. On the, on the Shabbats. And, Watch this. Um, well, pastor knew that I'm good at building or, you know, I got experience in it. You know, I've done it my whole life. So okay. I, Why I'm know, saying I can I speak got... about this. There's the same thing that happened in one West. There was brothers like the name, a brother named, a brother by the name of um, Yatazalyak, a brother by the name of Zamak that built the new school. This I, I've seen these demons operate with men before. They get the men that have skills and they use them for their skills and don't pay them. You're like they didn't pay this brother. They didn't pay. They didn't pay Zamak. They didn't pay um Yatazayak. They said it. It was their contribution to the nation. And although the men, I'm just showing you. I've seen a similar experience. I'm I'm showing you. This happened in 1991 in a different in a different religious group amongst the Israelites that was in Harlem, one West 125th Street, where they had a building fund where money was coming in for the building. And what they were doing, they were all stuffing their pockets. And then you hear that ungodly, wretched man, Lahab, talk about how he built the new school. He didn't build the school. He didn't. The money was given by the people and the brothers built the school for free. For free. They were never paid. I know these men. Their numbers are in my phone. And they told me they were never paid. So this is the same action that's going on with Dowell. It's the same wickedness. It's the same demons. One generation cometh, another generation passes away. But evil men and seducers shall wax, shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. Now watch. A couple months, something we stayed there. Not very, okay. I mean, we weren't there long at all. Okay. All of our stuff stayed there. My car, everything that I brought. Okay, one moment. To straightway, I was left there. I okay. was to me and my family were to move to straightway. This is under Dahl, his decision to move us there. Okay. <clears throat> so we moved there. Um, I got all kinds of like props at the beginning, like okay, this is how narcissists operate. He got all kind of props at the beginning. So when you hear about narcissism, right? How narcissists they love bomb you. They 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 switch you up same way how pimps operate same op same operation they acknowledge you they show you you're the, you're valuable they know you're an asset he said in the beginning he got all kind of props all kind how did they treat you in the beginning brother how i got all kinds of like props at the beginning like i was the man you know like he gave me all kinds of uh because i could build and a lot of the other guys on the land that's grooming type of skills they were that's grooming Go ahead. guys you know they didn't really know how to do you know they didn't have experience in that kind of you know them areas or whatever like i did anyways so i was put up kind of above them in ranks or whatever so it was like you're, you're so inspiring faith can you get proverbs chapter 26 for me proverbs 26 verse 25 and 26 Proverbs chapter 26, verse 25 and 26, please. What does it say here? It said, when he speaketh fear, believe him not, for there are seven abominations in his heart. I mean, they talk nice to you. When he speaks fear, I mean, you're running game. 
When he speaketh fair, believe him not, for there are seven abominations in his heart, whose hatred is covered by deceit. His wickedness shall be showed before the whole congregation. So now we're looking at the wickedness, okay? Let's read this right here. Let me, let, let me read this right here about religious predator. In the scorching trials of moral decay, we find the vilest of creatures, a religious predator, masquerading as a pillar of faith, but in truth are nothing more than a spiritual mercenary, peddling deceit under the cloak of friendship, peddling deceit under the cloak of friendship, brotherhood, and community. Again, in the scorching trial of moral decay, we find the vilest of all creatures, a religious predator, masquerading masquerading, masquerading as a pillar of faith, but in truth are nothing more than a spiritual mercenary peddling deceit under the cloak of friendship, brotherhood, and community. So what happened to this brother? They were peddling friendship under the cloak of brotherhood and community. He was a victim of their what? They're predatorizing him. All right, watch. Their predatory behavior with a treacherous tongue. Um, there's a typo right there. With a treacherous tongue, they betray trust, scatter. With a treacherous tongue, they betray trust, scattering the sacred bonds of obligation and duty. They auction off their very souls, casting aside conscience for the glitter of gold, the sparkle of silver, or the allure of other riches. These despicable beings, as their nefarious deeds unravel, they barter their minds, leasing out their moral compasses for a pittance of financial gain. I mean, they know it ain't right, but they always scheme in. They lease out. Let me see. Their moral compass, they're not concerned with right and wrong because they really want financial gain. With a treacherous tongue, they betray people's trust, shattering the sacred bonds of obligations and duty. They auction off their souls, casting aside conscience of the for the glitter of gold, the sparkle of silver, or the allure of other riches. These despicable beings, as their nefarious deeds unravel, they barter their minds, leasing out their moral compasses for a pittance of financial gain. This is Dowell's true face being exposed, for he is a merchant of pseudo faith, selling salvation for a price. This wretched peddler of piety is but a heretic puppet of avarice. Without a shred of shame, he's up for sale. Mere commodity for the greedy, selling his fake sanctimony, setting, selling his fake sanctimony and wisdom for a handful of coins. His greed knows no limits as he vicariously hoards wealth, craving possessions, power, and control over souls. And land he has no right to. He craves, he hoards wealth, craving possessions, power, and control over souls, and land he has no right to. His insatiable appetite blinds him to decency as he seeks to seize without regard for the rightful owner's treasures. The scripture said, A good man, what? Leaveth an inheritance for his children's children. How can these brothers leave an inheritance for their children's children and you take their own inheritance? He will covet your hard on labor. He will covet your hard on labor and your money, your spouse, your land, even your innocent children. This is what has been, this is what has been testified about him. Okay. Beware of this insidious parasite, for he will stop at nothing in his quest to feed his bottomless greed. He is a religious predator, a failure in his trial, being weighed in the balance. He's found what? He's found, he's found, he's found, he's found wanting. Let's go back. When he speaketh fair, believe him not. For there are seven abominations in his heart, whose hatred is covered by deceit, his wickedness shall be showed before the whole congregation. All right, let's go. Already put me in spots and stuff like that, where I felt uncomfortable in ways, almost, you know? So, so he promoted him. He promoted him. So anyways, he promoted him. Um, he promoted him because he needed, he wanted his skills for free. He promoted him because he was a carpenter and he wanted him to do stuff for free. Okay. He would do preachings in the dining hall that people don't get to see up the land. 
Are y'all listening? He would do preachings in the dining hall that you don't get to see off the land. Listen carefully. This is to drag you down. Um, like, he bel belittles you. Um, this is to drag you down. He belittles you. Are y'all listening to this? This is to drag you down. He belittles you. Did you? Let me say that again. One ways, almost, you know? So, so anyways, um, he would do preachings in the dining hall. But Brothers, the reason why this is important, right? Why is this important? Because most people who suffered under religious predators, they don't give a testimony. Most people that suffer under religious predators, what happens? That after they leave, they go silent. They don't want to have nothing to do with it. So it's important to hear people testify, right? When they were fully committed, this brother right here brought his family, brought his wife and his children to straightway. Under his, listen, but it was his choice. He brought them there thinking he would we'd be amongst a community of believers and brotherhood. He would it was for, for fraternity, and we're gonna build community, and we were going to have friendship, but it was all deceit. What happened to you, brother? Go ahead. Let me hear. Get Let the people hear. This is to drag you down. Um, like he, he belittles you. Um, you lose your voice. Um, you lose your voice. Um, this happened over. People don't get to see off the land. This is to drag you down but but then the lord said he spoke nothing in secret the lord said he spoke nothing in secret so this is the other side behind the scenes of straightway which there's a behind the scenes in most organizations that are impure that's why we heard about heard by eddie long that's why you hear about earl park that's why you hear about rg Steele. all the perversion that goes on behind the scenes um like he bel belittles you. Mm -hmm. um, you lose your voice. Um, this happened over time, though. This didn't happen right away. Because it's like you, they draw you in. You know, We got to the point where I would have other okay, brothers wait, wait, coming wait. over. I don't, I don't, and this and that. Talk. And it's... Let me go back, brother. So excuse me one second. I'm talking about him. Nobody else unless I, unless I say it specifically in this video. Let me put it back because my finger moved it fast. Okay, let's go. This is to drag you down. Um, like he bel belittles you. Okay. Um, you lose your voice. Um, this happened over time, though. This so publicly, what happens publicly, he lures you to people with love and he's about brotherhood, but when he gets you. On a community land is what he's saying. He belittles you. This is this is the behavior that all occult and cults do. This is what they do. There's a public face and there's private vice. Okay, it's like a woman getting married to a man, and the man marries the man marries a woman. She thinks she found a prince in shining armor, and then he's beating her and manipulating her and taking advantage of her and gaslighting her. Same thing. Or the man think he met his he met his queen, he met his princess, and she's going out on him, and she's messing with his mind and and destroying his assets, and she's not what he thought she was. Let's go. Didn't happen right away. It what, what it, it's like you it, draw you. It in didn't happen you. right away. It didn't happen right away. No, he draws you in first. Okay. And what I'm talking about. I'm talking about him. Who's him? Nobody else unless I, unless I say it specifically in this video. Everything I'm directing towards is Dow. Okay. Oh, Dow. Just okay, make Dao. that clear. Okay. So, um, anyways, he would have these uh, um, preachings in the dining hall. Okay. Where. What happened in the dining hall, brother? Can say it again? Your, your, your volume went out. Come on again. There's no compassion. There's no love. <laughs> There's no compassion, no love? 
it's but you thought there would be compassion down. and love. He preaches compassion and love, but there's no compassion, there's no love. Okay, go ahead. There's no compassion, there's no love. Okay, let's go here. Let's go to let's go to the eighth the eighth minute and the twentieth second. Okay, let's go. You don't see it, but he was above us all. That's exactly how he treated us too. The whole Yes. That's exactly how he treated us too. The whole, how do you treat yes. you? Mm -hmm. That's how you lose your voice over time. With everybody else? Yes. With him? No. No. He was above. Definitely not for him. It's not. He's, I mean, he's okay, let me, let, let, me, let me let you yeah. hear it. Let me let you hear it. I'm going to let you when hear it. When I got there, he preached all things common. Okay. Hmm. How I found out fast <laughs> that wasn't the case for everybody. <laughs> not at all. Definitely not for him. Definitely not for him. That's what I got to say about that. Definitely not for him. It's not all things common. That, no. That's a flat out lie, all things common. Maybe with okay. everybody else, yes. Meaning, the, him, meaning, no. Meaning, because no. even in organizations, even when I saw, Amongst Israelite, there's some Israelite brothers that are lower ranking that they, what they do, that they're not into the status, they into the care for each other. But this is a demon spirit that's operating over a lot of these elders, over Pastor Dao and the men that's with him. You take, here what they do. They take brothers' wives and make it their own. Same thing I've seen, in, I've seen this 30 years ago. I've seen it in a different organization, seen it already. They determine who your daughter gonna marry. They, they give your daughter to other people. Cena Martin that came out of ICGJC said they get your young, the young girls and they give them to older men to be mattresses. This is all type of perversion. So what the brother's witnessing, that he, 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 what he witnessed was 15, 2015. And it's still going on, the type of abuse and the manipulation and the taking the money. He was getting, how much he was getting? He was getting $100 a month and, and some people not getting no money. This was going on. Go ahead. He was above us all. Okay. That's exactly how he treated us too. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. That's how you lose your voice over time. You don't see it, but... Everybody falls in line. So then you end up doing it yourself almost where you lose your voice. You, you know, we got to the point where I would have other brothers coming over and, you know, it was just, it was so discouraging a lot of the time that we'd make fun of it to, I guess, get through it. I don't know how else to say it. Like <laughs> we, we, <sighs> We called it Dow's world. <laughs> okay, you called it what? I heard Rufus call him King Dow. We called him Dow. You know, we would we had our names too. And okay, brother and sister. Okay, why? Why? Here's the thing. It's what I'm saying his to you: way or there's no way. It's okay. He, takes he said they called it. Away. I don't care. All the elders. There was no other pastor. They called it Dow's world. He takes everybody's voice away. Listen to this. All the elders. There was no other pastor at that time that was that close with it. There was, but I heard Rufus call him King Dow. We called him Dow. You know, we would, we had our names too. And it's because it's the truth. It's his way or there's no way. It's, mm -hmm. he takes everybody's voice away. I don't care all the elders. There was no other pastor at that time that was that close with it. There was, but not that close to the, fellowship you know so there was mainly just elder at the time elders or whatever so mm -mm. if i brought anything up there was a feast and i brought up we were working on the feast and um this elder and you're not supposed to be working on a feast he said he brought up we were working on a feast talking to this brother why are you letting him feed and it wasn't even about that brother I read it in the book and I seen it and it said, it, so I asked a question. <laughs> His face looked like a tomato. He was so mad at me. I was like, whoa, guess can't ask questions. <laughs> yeah. 
I was I was surprised. I was I've never seen him get like that. So mad at me. Okay, so what happens? Um, Can we discuss that, brothers and sisters? Sometimes people be nice to you, and then the mask drops. And when the mask drops, brothers and sisters, when we go to the book of Ezekiel, it said, with force and with cruelty, they rule my people. That's what you're seeing right here. Inspiring, okay, can we get Isaiah chapter 32 and get the word churl? Isaiah chapter 32. I'm going to get Isaiah 32, and then we can get the word churl. Okay, so the brother's saying, let, let's, let's, let's just get this right here. He said, you lose your voice. Let me see, we have 10 minutes right now. Okay, let's go down to verse, let me see, 27. Let's go to 27. Okay. Out of the things he was he would do, how he would bash people, or how he we made jokes about it. We made fun of it. Stuff that we were talking about. And I didn't know how else. I didn't know how else to deal with it. I didn't know how else to deal with it. But we made jokes about it. We made mm -hmm. fun of it. We, <laughs> we like not jokes about it, like, but like we would try to make humor out of the things he was he would do, how he would bash people, or how he get way more and just the unfairness that he he does, the favoritism. <laughs> it's if you're not. A doll lover, you get treated like crap, like shit. Okay, you heard he's saying the favoritism. If you're not a doll lover, you get treated like crap. That's what he's showing you. If you're not a doll lover, you get treated like crap. You listening? If you're not a doll lover, you get treated like crap. He he does the favoritism. <laughs> it's it, how he would bash people or how he get way more and just inspiring picture we get unfairness. isaiah 32 the unfairness let me put this again how he would bash people or how he get way more and just the unfairness that he he does the favoritism <laughs> it's if you're not a doll lover you get treated like crap, like shit, straight shit. If you don't kiss his butt, you get treated like crap. And that's the honest truth. I'm not here to lie. I don't have anything to gain by any of this. Like I said, I don't talk to Pastor Rufus. I don't talk to nobody. Okay, so he's seen showing this you message of Pastor Go Rufus ahead. and what happened to him, and everything came back to me how I was treated, and then I heart started hearing Ringo's messages, and and the truth, and just everything started coming back, like I never got to tell my side of the story when I left there, straightway. Well, no, okay, hang on. He did a. Two hour block, not straightway, but Georgia. I'll explain in a second. But um, he did a, do a blog talk about me and my sons. Okay, so what they do, they trash you. Okay, he said when he left straightway, um, he left Georgia because after a while, that would made the environment hostile for him in the hub. This is what he's testifying. And then when he was transferred to back to Georgia, okay, after that would made use of him, Okay, like this, like he was just a tool, no feeling, no care. When he went back to Georgia, um, then Dow was talking about him. Do, what, what they do, they preach on you. That's what they do. He becomes, he becomes the battering post. That's where it's at. Because then now, now Dow is teaching people how I how I'm treating him. You better fear I'll treat you that way. He was making an example of him. Now let me show you, brothers and sisters, something here. Let me see something here. One moment before we go. Let me before we go to here. Let me go to 30 second, 32 minute. Okay. People don't because they don't have a voice. They're not Why don't in they a speak position up? to. No one will listen. That will talk. Or or whatever. And like you said, most people don't because they don't have a voice. Let's back up. Irrigation, buddy. 
That's who I want to see this. The kind. And I don't think he did. I don't think he knew the whole story. I don't think he, he's, a, he's talking about. He don't think Rufus knew the whole story. Go ahead. That's why I want to talk about it. Okay, and talk I about it. Get bro. it out. Mm -hmm. I want to explain. Like he said, there's two sides to every story. Nah, mm -hmm. there's three. Mine, his, and the congregation, buddy. I mean, let them hear it. Go ahead. That's who I want to see this. Mm -hmm. The congregation. Hmm. Not too many people live there that will talk. Or now, this is the important part. When people are caught up in these groups, he said, not many, too many people live there that will what? That will talk. They won't talk because they're afraid. They're intimidated. They're bullied. And they just want to move on. They want to heal. But he's saying not too many people who live there will talk. Go ahead. Or whatever. And like you said, most people don't because they don't have a voice. Mm -hmm. They're not in a position to. Oh. No one will listen to you. Or he demonizes you right away. He did it to every person that left that community or was affiliated, even if they didn't live there. Because most people don't live there. They just come and visit or whatever. Um, but he would demonize them. Basically, they're going to hell. They're out of the, the faith. They're no longer. Uh, okay, that's what cults do. When you leave them, they say you're going to hell. He's given, brothers, if you look up any cult experiences, that's what they tell you about cults. Okay, we're going to go read about R.G. Steer. He did the same thing. John Alexander Dowie, he did the same thing. That's what they do. When you leave them, they think that they're God, they're demonized, they're fully possessed, that you're going to hell when you leave them. As if they're the beginning, they're the author and finish of your faith. It's all a bunch of lies. Look what he's going to do right here. Let me see. Um, I want to get you this point right here. Let me get something 24. Let's go back to 24 for a second. Let's go back to 24 for one second. He used to come talk to me, tell me what's going on with the brothers and, you know, him and the other, el the elder. No, I'm no, I wasn't no elder. But he would tell me what's going on with the land during the day and stuff like that. I just sat there and ate it and didn't say a word i just didn't so know in the was. abuse he sat there and ate it he didn't say a word come on say anymore i was like i was like shocked i didn't actually think that would happen so mm -hmm. tension got worse um how i said it, that he used to come talk to me tell me what's going on with the brothers and you know him and the other el the elder no i'm no i wasn't no elder but he would tell me what's going on with the land during the day and stuff like that you know and he would tell so me. So in the beginning, God used to speak to him, then the tension got worse. Okay. And then what? He wouldn't speak to him. No. What what would you what what happened to the relationship afterward? I had to tell the brothers what to do or this or that, you know. Well, that changed. He'd come in, start telling another brother, saying, This uh, all these brothers are dragging down the job and ain't working hard and blah blah this and blah blah that. And I was getting accused of he wouldn't call in my name, but he was referring to me. I, it wasn't hard to figure it out. He quit coming to me, quit talking to me, and started basically just treating me like total dirt, like dirt. <laughs> um, then I heard um, preaching about a a man wanting a married woman. Okay, I, so brothers and sisters, then he started falsely accusing him. Okay, um, this is what I want to get to right now. Let me get to this part right here to show you a few things. Um, Let's go to 2 Corinthians. Okay, um, let me change this. Let's go to 2 Corinthians chapter 7. Let me share this tab. Let's go to 2 Corinthians chapter 7. And let's go to 2 Okay, verse 1. Okay, we're going to go to, let's do the KJV first. Let's do the King James Version first. And then we'll read it. Then we'll go look at these other versions. King James Version. 2 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 1. Having therefore these precious promises, dearly beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and of the spirit. Perfecting holiness in the fear of God. That's what he said. That's what's being taught here. Paul is telling the Corinthians, let us therefore cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and of the spirit, perfecting holiness in the fear of God. Receive us. We have wronged no man. 
We have corrupted no man. We have defrauded no man. The brother talked about how he was defrauded. In the Bible, Paul is saying that the men that were with him, we have what? We have corrupted no man. We have defrauded no man because it's showing you that no minister of God is defrauding or corrupting or cheating people. That's how you know that they what? They're not sent. You shall know them by their fruits. The good fruit says we have corrupted no man. We have defrauded no man. Meaning Paul didn't take nobody's wife. Paul didn't, Paul didn't rob nobody of their, um, their weekly or monthly living. No, he didn't. But it shows you this is an indictment on ungodly people. He didn't mistreat no one. When you go to First Corinth, when you go to um, Isaiah, I think before we go to Isaiah, let's get the rest of these versions here. Let's go to the Amplified now. Let's go to Amplified. Let's go to Amplified. Okay. Amplified version. Though, therefore, since we have these great and wonderful promises, beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from everything that contaminates body and spirit, completing holiness, living a consecrated life, a life set apart for God's purpose in the fear of God. Make room for us. So Paul is saying to the Corinthians, make room for us. Because the brothers that were with him, they were all upright. Make room for us in your hearts. We have wronged no one. We have corrupted no one. We have cheated no one. So there's many people online that talks about what Pastor Dowell did to them, that they corrupted them, they mistreated them, they cheated them, they took advantage of them. That's what they did. So people talk about the situation with Rufus, but Rufus was all part. Rufus was also part of corrupting people and cheating people, because he said that Eric should have just took the money, and Eric said, "No, give it to the poor. I don't want to be part of this right here." He had some. He had some sense of God. Make room for us. We have wronged no one. We have corrupted no one. We have cheated no one. Let's go over here. What this is the MSG, the message version, Second Corinthians. Let's look here. Trust us. We have we have not hurt a soul, neither exploited, exploited or taken advantage of anyone. Trust us. We never hurt a soul, never exploited or taken advantage of anyone. So you brothers and sisters that think that that think that this is okay, the apostles didn't do that. You're making excuses for this conduct. The apostles didn't do that. They did not exploit or take advantage of anyone. How are you dealing with that? They did not exploit or take advantage of anyone. Let's get the CSB version. Hold on right here, which is the Christian St Standard Bible. What does it say right here? Make room for us. We have wronged no one, corrupted no one, taken advantage of no one. But what you see in straight way, all these testimonies, people were taking advantage of. How are you taking somebody's whole paycheck? Look at the heartlessness. The scripture said, he that hath this world's good and see if his brother have need and shutteth up his bowels of compassion. How dwelleth the love of God in, in them? So how are you taking, if you're supposed to be, the whole point of being the gospel, you're a giving person. How are you a taker and not a giver? Because the Lord said he loves a cheerful giver. But the reason why, brother and sister, because it's manifest to you, brother and sister, that this man is not of God. And he's deceiving people. Again, brothers and sisters, I'm going to say this to you also. Remember the scripture says the Levites have a commandment from God to take tithes of the people. Remember that scripture? The Levites have a commandment of God to take tithes of the people that is of their brethren. Thou don't have no commandment to take tithes from you. So stop giving him your tithes. Thou does not have a commandment from God to take tithes of the people. He ain't no Levite and we're not under the old covenant. So stop giving your tithes to pass the dowel and straightway ministries or tithes to anybody. They do not have a commandment of God to take tithes of the people. They don't have that. And the Lord made it that way in the new covenant to, to listen so that all the fraudsters and the con artists can be easily seen and identified. You shall know them by their fruits. Okay. Let me see what, what else here. We did the Amplified. We, let's, see, let's see the voice. Let's see the voice. Um, there's another version called a voice. You can look down here. Let's look down here. Let's see the voice. Let's see what it says here. It says, let's see here. 
go ahead and see. Let's look at it right here. Take us in your hearts. Love us as we love you. We have nothing to fear. We have hurt no one, ruined no one, swindled no one. So that is what you see with Pastor Dawa and his church. They have hurt so many people. They have swindled so many people. They have ruined many lives. That's what goes with him and most of these Israelite camps. They hurt people. They ruin people. They have corrupted people and taken advantage of so many people. Paul said we wrong no man. Okay. That's what he said about himself. Let's go to Isaiah now. Let's go to the book of Isaiah. Let me stop this here. Let's go to Isaiah chapter 32. I'm going to show you something that I had to learn. A lot of men justify the rude behavior. And before we read this, I'm going to say this. Brother and sister, you cannot allow this type of um, con, conning going on where somebody can tell you they can take your paycheck and your obligation, your righteousness, your show of faith is to give them your whole paycheck. God is not requiring that from you. Brothers and sisters, you, you've been deceived. So you need to get away from straightway. You need to leave. You need to rebuild the relationships with your family. Where they say, well, you know what? Um, um, we're supposed to be set apart. Let me, I'm going to show you something about being set apart. Okay? I'm going to show you, brothers and sisters, something. Let's go to 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 9. Let's understand about being set apart. 1 Corinthians chapter 5. Verse 9. I'm going to put the KJV here. Let me see. What is it? Let me see. Let's see. We want to start with, we want to start with this version. Do we want to look at this verse? Okay. Okay, let's do the King James Version first. First Corinthians 5, verse 9, because people didn't need to go live in the woods and the bushes for them to live a set-apart life. That is not what God is talking about. Chapter and verse. Where is it? Okay, let's get it. First Corinthians chapter 5, verse 9. The KJV is on the right-hand side. Okay? I'm going to put the Amplified on the left-hand side. Okay. Give it a minute. Um... Here we go. Okay. In 1 Corinthians chapter 5, look at verse 9. I wrote unto you in an epistle not to keep company with fornicators, yet, yet not all together with the fornicators of this world, or with the covetous, or extortionists, or with idolaters. So Paul told them not to keep company with fornicators, with men that are sexually promiscuous, that, that be just running around smashing women. This is my wife today. She, she's not my wife tomorrow. No, don't keep company with fornicators, sexually immoral and promiscuous people. I wrote unto you in an epistle not to keep company with fornicators, yet not altogether with the fornicators of this world, or with the covetous, or extortionists, or with idolaters. For then must ye needs go out of the world. So he's saying to you, and him telling you not to keep company with fornicators, he's not telling you you got to go out the world because there's fornicators everywhere. But what is he saying? But now I have written unto you not to keep company if any man that is called a brother be a fornicator or covetous or an idolater or a railer or a drunkard or an extortioner with such and one know not to eat. So when you see men teaching the Bible and they putting liquor to their mouth and, and they talk about Jesus was a wine beer, but no. No, no, no. You cannot preach God's word drunk or inebriated. You cannot. That's all. That shows your lack of respect for the scriptures. Yet not all together with the fornicators of this world. For it says, but then must ye needs go out of the world. So it's not about you going out of the world and going into the woods to be set apart. It's how you live your life. It's your discipline. It's your self-control where you're not fornicating. You're not covetous. You're not idolatrous. You're not a railer. You're not a drunkard. You're not an extortioner. That's how you live the set-apart life. 
People had churches in their house. That's how they lived a set apart life. They didn't have to go into the woods or into the bushes or become Hamish. It's always beneficial for you to be amongst a company of people that share your same beliefs and your faith. But you don't got to sell your house and move to the backwoods in an apocalyptic state of mind. That is not what the that is not what was done in the in the New Testament. That's not, that's just not what was done. And on the left-hand side, we have the Amplified. I wrote to you in previous letters not to associate with sexually immoral people. Look at all the sexual immorality that you hear about it straightway. Not meaning the immoral people of this world or the greedy ones and swindlers. You hear about greedy ones and swindlers or idolaters, but then you must have to get out of the world and human, and human society altogether. So God is not telling us to get out of the world and human society together. But actually, I have written to you not to associate with any so-called Christian brother if he is sexually immoral or greedy. So the reason why they took the people's money and said, you got to give me your paycheck and I'm going to take one paycheck and then you, you can keep one because they're greedy. And you're not supposed to be around those type of men because, brothers and sisters, those of you that have did that, you have been extorted in the Bible. You have been extorted by ungodly men. That was extortion where they put together a cocktail of scriptures that have been perverted in order to seduce your mind and chiching and you give them your money. It was a robbery. It was a con. It was not consecration. It was not community. It was not godliness. Do you understand? You're reading it here. I wrote to you in previous epistles, so Paul is telling the Corinthians not to associate with, or that's how you be set apart, not to associate with sexually immoral people, not meaning the immoral people of the world or greedy ones and swindlers or idolaters, but then you must needs go out of the world. I mean, because they might be on the job. But actually, I've written unto you to, associate, to not associate with any so-called Christian brother if he is sexually immoral or greedy or is an idolater devoted to anything that takes the place of God. And some men, they have taken the place of God. You have to leave them. Or is a reviler who insults or slanders or otherwise verbally abuses others. Who insults or slanders, y'all look at this right here, who insults or slanders or verbally abuses others. Or is a drunkard or a swindler, you must not so you. You must not so much as eat with such a person. So what are y'all doing in straight way? You're not supposed to eat with brothers that are swindlers. Brothers that use the Bible to make people give up their money and give up their check and abandon their family. Those are swindlers. Those are not ministers. You're being told on this channel. And I'm going to say this to you right here, right? Let me put it here. Invite, copy, here. Because um, we could have a talk. There it is. There goes the link. There it is. Because I don't know how you're going to defend this type of unrighteousness. You want to talk about it. People want to talk about the corruption in the Christian church. What kind of wickedness is going on amongst the Israelites? Who insults? You can't keep company with a reviler. What's, what's a reviler? Who insults or slanders or otherwise verbally abuses others? The brother said he took a, that Dawa speaks to take away your voice. That's what he does. He treated them like dirt. He treated them like crap. Brother and sister, you're not supposed to be company with somebody like that. That ain't tough love. That's reviling. You have to just look the word up. Okay? I hope y'all learning. I hope you're understanding. Okay, let's go to Isaiah 32. Okay, let's go to Isaiah 32. And we, we're going to deal with this right here. Isaiah chapter 32. Mm. Behold the king. Isaiah 32, behold the king. Um, on the left-hand side is Amplified. On the right-hand side is King James Version. Behold, the king shall reign in righteousness and princes shall rule in judgment. A man shall be as a hiding place from the wind and a covered from the tempest and as, a, and as rivers of water in a dry place as a shadow of a great rock in a weary land. And the eyes of them that see shall not be dim and the ears of them that hear shall hearken. Listen carefully. 
Who, which king, you know, this is talking about Jesus Christ's reign. That's why the scripture says, every knee shall bow and confess to him, not to a bully. Not to a bully. So y'all can look up the Jeremiah 22, 13, look it up in different versions so you can see, woe to him that, that giveth not his neighbor for his service. He's building houses and got the brothers working for nothing. And you think it's for community. No, you've been conned. It was not community, it was con. Look at the Lord in Isaiah 32. He gonna reign in righteousness and princes gonna rule in judgment, meaning doing what's right. Verse four, the heart also of the rash shall understand knowledge and the tongue of the stammerers shall be ready to speak plainly. The vile person shall be no more called liberal, nor the churl said to be bountiful. For the vile person will speak villainly. So look at what he's showing you. When the king comes, the churl is not going to be mistaken as a bountiful person. Are we looking at this verse? But then says, look up the word churl. Look up the word churl. When the Lord, when the king comes, the vile person shall no more be called liberal. When you go to the etymology of the world, liberal meaning magnanimous. You're not going to think a vile person is a prince. See, because they they change it. They change the standard and people are deceived by them. For the vile person will speak villainly and their heart will utter iniquity to practice hypocrisy and to utter error against the Lord to make empty the soul of the hungry. And he look at the brother, he was crying and he will cause the drink of the thirsty to fail. The instruments of the churl are evil. He deviseth wicked devices to destroy the poor with lying words, even when the needy speaketh right. So when you leave straightway or any other cult, what do they do? They try to destroy the poor with lying words, even when you're standing up to speak what is right. Here we go. What does it mean, the word churl? The word churl is an individual lacking in social graces. So when Jesus Christ steps in, when Jesus Christ said, I'm, I'm come a light into the world. When he's the light in the world, what happens is the churl, the person that's a churl, look at the verse five. The churl is no longer going to said to be bountiful. Give me one moment. I'm going to stop this screen right here. Stop sharing. Let me get this other part right here. Y'all can, you can, you can read the word churl right there. Let me see what the brother said right here. Let me see. He said there's another person. Let me come back. Somebody said there's another person that have this community. This guy debated Dawa many years back. As far as I've seen, it looks like they have a... No, but see, but here's the thing. Um, people think they have a community. But brother and sister, if the doctrine is perverted, the conduct going to be perverted. But do you have enough um, experience to discern when someone claiming to be spiritual is really pseudo, is really counterfeit, is really an imposter? Okay, but we're going to come back to that, okay? Give me a minute. Let me get this right here. Share screen. I want to show y'all this. Okay. Take your time. Here we go. Um, we're going to go to Isaiah 32, okay? Isaiah 32. This talks scriptures, right? For the vile person, look, the, the vile person shall no more be called liberal. Look at this word liberal. You see what it says right there? I'm going to put it up on the screen. I'm clicking on the liberal, which is H5084. You go here to... Mm -mm. Go back. Go back. Nope. Give me one minute. Here we go. You see H5068. Let me let you see it. Let me let you see it again. H5068. Okay. It says... That is generous, hence magnanimous. So the vile person shall no longer be called liberal because he was a liberal. I mean, this guy's a noble. This guy's a prince. But he's really a tyrant pretending to be a prince. A vile person is no longer going to be called. He's not going to be called liberal. Give me one minute. Okay. Yeah, but that's better we do it that way. The vile person shall no more be called liberal. See the word right here? Look, 5081. See this? 
magnanimous. So when a person is vile, people was, were mistaking vile people, wicked people. See right here, H5036. When it says vile, it's showing you a wicked person. A wick, see, wicked. H5034, a vile person. Stupid, wicked, especially impious, foolish. So there was going to be a period where the people were going to be in darkness before the king came, where vile people, wicked people would be called, they were being mistaken as being liberal. See it right here? So that's why people thought this man was a prince. This man has the spirit of God. This man is anointed. But they were vile people that they should, they should not be called liberal. So what you see with Dawu and what you see with the men that's with him, these are all vile men. You shouldn't be calling them liberal. You can't call them nobles. You can't call them princes. You can't call them willing. You can't call them upright. You can't call them gen generous because, brothers and sisters, it tells you the vile person, a wicked person, see, a vile person. Look at H5032. Look at the signs. You shall know them by their fruits. Here's the character. A vile person will speak. What are they going to speak? They're going to speak villainly. What is villainly? What they're going to speak what? Wickedness. A vile person is also going to be what? A vile person, it shows you right here, Isaiah 32. And you're going to see right here in verse hmm, five, nor the churl said to be bountiful. So there are men that were churls. They were churls. So you look at the churl. Look at the word churl, brothers and sisters. We're going to put the word churl back on the screen. So before the light came, people thought the Pharisees, the Sadducees, were what? Were good men. That they were people of God, just like Dathan and Korah. But when the light comes, when you gain the divine perspective, when you have the mind of Christ, you see that these men that were masquerading as good people or godly people, a man of God, they have the spirit, they have the anointing, they have the ruach. They were really churls. Because a churl speaks a certain way. They lack social graces, characterized by rudeness and being impolite. What you see with straightway ministries is characterized by rudeness and impolite. This term describes someone who shows little concern or respect for the rights and feelings of others. And they, 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 they even try to say, God don't care how you feel. A churl is marked by a primitive, gross, or elemental demeanor, often displaying uncultivated simplicity or vulgarity. So when a person's a churl, that's why they use profanity. That's why you see the tongue of those men in straight way. They curse and they carry on because they're moving in the spirit of a churl, not the spirit of Christ. A churl is a person who lacks social graces or polish. So if you're polished, you will not be using vulgarity. You will not be dis displaying an elemental, primitive, gross behavior. If you, if, you're, if you are a person that's polished and refined, you will have social graces and you will respect the rights and feelings of other people. But what did the Lord say here? In Isaiah 32, it said, A vile person will speak villainly and his heart will work iniquity to practice hypocrisy and to utter error against the Lord. I mean, they're going to speak against the word. So tell me the cursing and the carry on you see on sh in straightway and those men. That's not churlish behavior. It's churlish behavior. It's not Christian. It's not godly. It's not noble. It's not Israelite behavior. It is the Bible describes that behavior as churlish behavior. Brother and sister, write down this definition. When Jesus Christ said, while you have the light, believe in the light that you may become children of the light. When you are a child of the light, you're supposed to be able to differentiate between a wheat and a tear, between a Christian and a churl, between a Christ-like spirit and a churl-like spirit. You have to know the difference. Churl. Accordingly, a churl may exhibit bad manners stemming from a poorly brought up upbringing, which makes others uncomfortable. In some contexts, the term may also refer to someone speaking about sexual manners in a crude or offensive manner, indicative of a rudimentary or early developmental stage. Moreover, a churl represents a deliberate scoundrel or criminal. So for a period, the people would think before Christ came into their life, they would think that a churl was what? Was bountiful. They would think that a churl, a rude person, was a noble or upright. But you cannot do that anymore because when the king's light shines unto you, you understand that the vile person was not magnanimous. They were not a prince, right? It says right here. 
devour person shall no more be called liberal. Stop calling them anointed. Stop calling them sent. Stop calling them prophets. Stop calling them Holy Ghost filled. They're vile. They're wicked. They're churls. When we read here in Jeremiah 22, verse 13, when we read here, let's pin this down, Jeremiah 22. Verse 13, woe to him that buildeth his house by unrighteousness and his chambers by wrong, that useth his neighbor's service without wages and giveth them not for his work, that saith, I will build me a house and large chambers and cutteth him out windows and it is sealed with cedar and painted with vermilion. I mean, they house look good. And look at how the people live in. Shall thou reign because thou clothed thyself with cedar? Or did not thy father eat and drink and do judgment and justice? And then it was well with him. What is the judgment and the justice? He judged the cause of the poor and needy. He, was, he, he, he treated people fairly. He was a kind person. Then it was well with him. That's the righteousness that's being required. If you love me, keep my commandments. And it was well with him. Look what it says. Was not this, Jeremiah twenty two sixteen? He judged the cause of the poor and needy. Then it was well with him. Was not this to know me, saith the Lord. But thine eyes and thine heart are not but for thy covetousness, for to shed innocent blood and for oppression and for violence to do it. Therefore, thus saith the Lord concerning Jehoiakim, the son of Josiah, king of Judah, they shall not lament for him, saying, Ah, my brother, or Ah, sister. They shall not lament for him, saying, Ah, Lord, or Ah, his glory. He shall be buried with the burial of an ass drawn and cast forth beyond the gates of Jerusalem. Why, brothers and sisters, why did this happen? Because he used the people's labor for his own self. He was not about community. He was not about brotherhood. He was not about friendship. He was not about faith. But he used people labor just like they're doing it straightway for their own will, their own vision, for their own vanity, for their own community. No, but the people didn't have the ability to eat the fruit of their own labor. Why are you giving another man your whole paycheck? You don't have, that's extortion. You're being extorted in straightway. You're being connived. If you, you're being you're, you're submitting and you're bowing to the conniving spirit of Satan. That's why it says he as God sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. And in the spirit of the world, you think that's OK. But go check Christ. The Lord Jesus Christ didn't do that. Paul didn't do that. And when you see in the early church, they were of one heart and they were of one spirit and they laid the funds down at the apostles' feet. But you don't see that going on. That was an event that took place in Jerusalem to establish the movement of the gospel. So the gospel was supported. But when Paul said, I seek not yours but you, what did Paul say? I preach the gospel without what? Without charge that I abuse, that I abuse not my power in the gospel. Brothers and sisters, y'all have in straight where they've been abused. And all of us, when you, you see in the Israelite camps and in Blaze Judah, brothers and sisters are being abused because the men that are sitting down that call themselves elders don't have the love. They don't have the care. They don't have the concern. They don't have the compassion. They don't have the brotherhood. They don't have the friendship. They don't have the faith. They don't have the spirit. They don't have it. They don't have it. So let me see the comments. I'm going to go check the comments now. Give me a minute. Let's scroll. Oh, yeah, let's get this right here. It says, Thou hast consulted shame to thy house by cutting off many people. So there's shame upon the house of Dowell and all ministers that have done this because you cut off a lot of brothers and sisters and you sinned against your soul. This is what they did. This is all heathen practices to use people like this. You hear about people, they, 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 they get people, what they did in Dubai when they built and in Qatar, they have people coming over there to work and they use them like slaves. The brothers are just doing with the, using it the Bible and make you right, making you think that you're doing this for God. You're not doing that for God because God does not require that of you. God does not require of you to give up your whole paycheck. The scripture said, let him that is taught in the Lord communicate unto him that teacheth in all good things. You are commanded to share to share, to contribute to the ministry, not give your whole paycheck, not sell your house and give up your social security and your 401k and your IRA and give a man your pension. That is not required. Who have required that of you? God did not require that. Peter didn't require, require that. And the apostle didn't require that. It was not required. You're being extorted. Inspiring for you, can we get 2 Corinthians? 
in the Amplified, chapter 11. Um, can we get from 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 15, all the way down to verse 20? Can I get in the Amplified? So he consulted shame to your house by cutting off all them brothers and sisters. Look at this right here. Um, for the stone shall cry to the wall, and the beam out of the timber shall answer it. Look at verse 12. Woe to him that built up a town with blood. So all these communities were built by blood. Goshen, Florida, Georgia, Tennessee, they fall under this judgment right here. They build these communities by blood, by fraud, by deceit, by handing the word of God deceitfully. Woe to him that built up a town with blood and established a city by iniquity. How did you get the community? How did you get that land? How did you get those trailers? How did you get that truck? Oh, you got it by blood, by using people by giving not your neighbor for his service and giving him not for his work. That's how you got it. So what did God say? God said, woe to you for you doing that. God said, woe to you for doing that. You built communities with blood. You didn't give people for, for their work and for their labor. God said, woe to you. We can read about woe to the scribes and Pharisees. We can read about woe to the scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites. <clears throat> but you need to remember that God is saying woe to you if you use people, man. If you use people for your own selfish gain, for your own vanity, for your own, you, you want to set up your own homestead. Because you are prepper and you confused and you deceived about yourself. And you were disciples of R.G. Stair. God said, woe to him that built up a town with blood and established up a city by iniquity. Let me read this about R.G. Stair. Let me read this. I'm going to read this something to you. Give me a minute. Mm-hmm. Yep. Okay. Let me read this to you. As a matter of fact, one second. Yeah, let me read this. The Dao is um, came out of R.G. Steer. Okay, I'm going to read this to you. R.G. Steer, which is Ralph Gordon Steer, was a Ralph Gordon Steer. That Dao called him a prophet. R.G. Steer, a.k.a. Ralph Gordon Steer, was a charismatic, domineering figure establishing a community that offered its members a sense of exclusive exclusivity and belonging while simultaneously stripping them of their autonomy and critical thinking abilities. Born in Bethlehem, Pennsylvania, Stair, Ralph Gordon Stair was an ordained, was ordained as a Methodist minister, but later distanced himself from the organized religion. Preferring to call himself simply a Christian, he moved to the South in the 1950s, claiming that God instructed him to do so as it would be the safest place for Christians in the end times. So he was an R.G. Steer that Dowell came from, that was tutored under. And while I'm going to read this, you're going to see the same foundation that Dowell is under was R.G. Steer's foundation. Not in Christ. Watch. Stair was ordained as a minister, but later distanced himself from the organized religion, preferring to call himself a Christian. He moved to the South in 1950, claiming that God had instructed him to do so, as it would be the safest place in the end times. A lot of these false ministers, what did they do? They all had apocalyptic states of mind. Okay, let me get, can we get a picture of R.G. Stair? Let get it, let's get R.G. Stair on the screen. Let me get him. Can we get R.G. Stair? Can we get him on the screen? Let's get him on the screen. Let me get him on the screen so you can see who I'm talking about. Mm, one moment. Can we get him on the screen? R.G. Stair. One minute. Okay. This, this criminal over here. Give, give me a minute. 
stop screen. I'm going to show you who we're talking about. Okay. Okay. This guy. This guy. This is what we're talking about. This guy here. This guy right here. Him. This guy is who we're talking about right now. Okay. This is who. Dowell. Who Dowell's following in his footsteps. Okay. Let's watch. Let's listen to about this information about R.G. Steer. One more. Stair's teaching place a Stair's teaching place a strong emphasis on millennial predictions. That's what we're talking about. A strong emphasis on millennial prediction because everybody was caught up with the Y2K. The world gonna end before the year 2000. So you hear about the camps doing it. This guy was in it also. Him. This guy. Okay, let's go. Give me a minute. Okay. Stairs teaching placed a strong emphasis on millennial predictions and divine judgments with prophecies of world-changing events and the imminent return of Jesus. He gained publicity over the years for several failed prophecies, including predicting nuclear confrontation and the premature end of Ronald Reagan's presidency. So he was proven to be a false prophet because he predicted nuclear confrontation and he predicted that Ronald Reagan's presidency was going to end. In the year 1999, he said that there would be such changes at the dawn of the third millennium if the Lord God Almighty does not make a major move before the year 2000. He said, I'll tell God to go to hell. So he was so sure. This guy right here, who Dawa was taught by, who there's, there's, there's information online about the connection between overcoming ministries and straightway ministries. You can look it up. Okay. Let's watch. In 1978, here's what happened. Stair purchased a hotel in Walterboro, South Carolina, and established the Overcomer Ministries. He encouraged followers to move to the community. Sound familiar? He encouraged followers to move to the community, sell all their possessions. Sound familiar? Take a vow of poverty and donate everything to the ministry. This is what R.G. Stair did. This is what Dowell tells people to do. This is in 1978. Cult members are berated daily via in-person sermons at mealtime. That's what the brother Jamie said. Jamie Plant said they did the same thing to them. They were berated by Dowell. It's the same fruit that R.G. Steer had. Cult members are berated daily via in-person sermons at mealtime. Tabernacle gatherings and sermons played over a loudspeaker on the property. The message is repetitive and is accompanied with scripture. The gist is these are the end of days. Jesus is soon returning. The criteria for not burning forever in hell are to listen to the prophet. And that is what that is what El Pastor Corey tells the people that this is this guy is the Moses of our time. That's what Rufus said, that Dawah was the Moses, the prophet of the time. We're going to listen to what Rufus said. We can go back to that another time. Even Rufus was saying that Dawah was a prophet and he was not. He was deceived. Rufus is this, was deceived by Dawah because he projected his false self. And when you're under the spirit, when you're in the spirit of the world, then Satan just downloads how you how you should feel about his ministers and about his servants. Let me finish reading this. R.G. Stair. I'm going to just read it right out. And y'all tell me if y'all see the similarities. He purchased a hotel in Walterboro, South Carolina, and established Overcoming Ministries. He encouraged followers to move to the community, sell all their possessions. Who was this? The guy on the screen. Take a vow of poverty and donate everything to the ministry. Cult members are berated daily via in-person sermons. Tabernacle gatherings and sermons played over a loudspeaker on the property. The message is repetitive and is accompanied with scripture. The gist is these are the end of days. Jesus is soon returning and the criteria for not burning in hell are to listen to the prophet. Craig Mack was even taken by the same guy. Craig Mack, the rapper. Yes. 
It says repentance, obedience, humility, and repeat. Repentance, obedience, humility, and repeat. Repentance, obedience, humility, and repeat. Fall out of line and one is brutally tugged back with public shaming and fear mongering. So if you fall out of line, you brought back in with what? With public shaming. Okay. Sound familiar? Okay. Meaning that's why there's many videos that the same oh, the same branch of overcoming ministries straightway they do the same thing to further ensure one soul is safe stir essentially makes each community member destitute without him textbook isn't it people are lured into this little farm community made to believe it's exclusive and difficult to gain approval then they are manipulated into selling or giving away all they own and are told to show up with virtually nothing. The message is taken by the followers, give everything to, to what to steal. The message is taken by the followers as a test from God, an invitation to be obedient and be in God's favor via said obedience and leap of faith. Conveniently for stare, this results in an excellent position of leverage. No doubt, just as he planned, and the new cult member now has no home, no money, no car, and a fresh estrangement from heartbroken, angry family and friends on the outside who see right through everything and raises alarm. There, are, there have been allegations and reports suggesting that RG Stair used fear tactics to manipulate people into giving him money. Some former followers have said that he employed apocalyptic prophecies and warnings of divine judgment to instill fear in his followers. Sounds familiar? Which in turn compelled them to donate to his ministry. Although after joining, most people's funds were controlled and managed by Steer. After the people joined, their funds were controlled and managed by Stair. Sound familiar? That's what's going on in what? Straightway Ministries. That's what Pastor Dow was doing. The multiracial, multi-generational intercommunity of about 70 members that, were, that lived on the compound strives for self efficient self-sufficiency and simplicity growing their own food and making their own clothes stair utilizes radio broadcasts and shortwave radio to convey his message to the u.s europe and israel leasing airtime on large coverage am and fm radio stations using a solar powered radio studio based in the community to fund this ministry, Stair relies on donations from followers with broadcast expenditures reaching about how much? One million funded dollars in contributions. Despite receiving funds of up to $100,000 a month, the ministry struggled financially in more recent years. Stair was also involved in a failed ship-based radio project in the 1990s Controversies surround stare with allegations of sexual abuse, infant deaths. And then when you hear from the brother around stare, there was infant deaths. Okay. Let me see something else. Around stare, there were infant deaths. Let me see something. Let me see something. One minute. Let me see something. Infant deaths. Let me see something. Wait a minute. Okay. Let's see. Let's see if we can get if does this sound familiar? Around there, they were infant deaths. Okay. Let's share this tab now. Let's take a look. This is Eric that left. What did he say? Order and just go straight to the congregation with these things. He said he didn't want to go to order. And go, he, he was trying to not go straight to the congregation with it. Go ahead. What happened? Go ahead. I recall when just in the last couple of years that there was a series of deaths of babies in the wombs of the mothers in this ministry of straightway at communities. Horrible, awful thing. Awful. Okay, wait, 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 wait. Did even wait Pastor minute, Dow, wait, 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 wait. from his own testimony, wait again, minute, wait speaking wait, over wait, the... Wait, 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 wait. So again? again, skip all biblical order and just go straight to the congregation with these things. So wait, 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 at wait. communities. Horrible, awful thing. So again, skip all biblical order. Wait, wait, at communities. Horrible. So again, skip all. 
Give me a minute. Give me a minute. Let's get this right here. Wait. That there was a series of deaths of babies in the wombs of the mothers in this ministry of straightway at communities. Horrible, awful thing. You hear that? So he was a teacher. There was a series of deaths of infants and babies in the ministry of what? Straightway. Now, we're going back to this guy. Let's go back to him. Let's go back to him. The same guy stare. What is said about him? It says that it says here. Let me read it again. Let me read this again. Controversy around stare, around stare with allegation of sexual abuse, infant debts, and accusations of running a cult-like organization. So the same way that there was infant debts with stare, there's a bunch of infant debts with what? That, this, is, this is what he said. This is what Eric said. He objects, because Stare, what does Stare do? He objects to medical intervention and teaches avoidance of doctors, leading to tragic consequences for some community members, including infants who died during or shortly after birth due to lack of medical care. Okay. Is that what we heard here? Is that what we heard here? Okay, let's try it again. Let's, let me, let's, uh, give me one minute. What's a minute? Give me a minute. Let's share this tab again. That there was a series of deaths of babies in the wombs of the mothers in this ministry of straightway at communities. Horrible, awful thing. Okay, fair use. So what we're seeing is the same pattern. It's the same pattern we see here with this guy, him. Are you looking at that? Are you seeing? Are you know the tree buys fruit? Okay. Let's go. Okay. Mm -hmm. Let's finish this. It says, Stairs manipulation tactics extended beyond his community with newcomers lured in and manipulated into giving up their possessions. So didn't Dawa say the same thing? You're supposed to give up your possessions and cutting ties with their families. Those who question Stair's authority are rebuked and shamed, perpetuating a cycle of control and dependency. Many struggle to reintegrate into society after leaving, having been conditioned to believe in Stair's twisted version of reality. In essence, R.G. Stair's cult-like tactics serve to exert control over his followers, leaving a trail of broken relationships and shattered lives in his wake. While not all psychopaths are killers, Stair's manipulation and exploitation of vulnerable individuals demonstrate a disregard for their well-being and a thirst for power and control. We see the same thing with Dowell, manipulation, exploitation of vulnerable individuals and a disregard for their well-being, their family, while he has a thirst for power. Okay, let me see something here. Let's see here. Let me let you sit on that for a second. Okay. Let you sit on that for a moment. If you see the violence, let me see the comment section. Let me put this back here. Okay. Do you think it's the same? Do you think it's the same devil, but still trans transferring vessels to you? Of, of, of course, it's the same devil. Of, of course, it's the same devil. Now, we're going to read here. Second Corinthians chapter 11. Let's read from verse 15. So it is no great surprise if his servants also, if Satan's servants, it's no great surprise if Satan's servants mask also masquerade as servants of righteousness. So what you're seeing is Satan's servants masquerading you see this with Straightway. You can't just say you see it with T.D. TD Jakes and Cleft Dollar, and you can't see it with Straightway. And look at all these Israelite brothers that gave him the man of the year. Y'all know he was part of this? Y'all know he was robbing the people, taking all their money and taking their whole paycheck and taking their social security, doing stuff that the wicked, the ungodly, the heathen don't even do. So it is no great surprise. I'm Maverick, let me read the fourth let me read the 14th verse in the Amplified. 
Give me a minute. Let me just read the 14th verse. What does it say in the verse 14? It says, and no marvel since Satan himself masquerades as an angel of light. So since Satan masquerades as the angel of light, you may think you're getting revelation, but who you got that revelation from? Because Satan masquerades as an angel of light. He masquerades as the teacher of the gospel. He masquerades like he's given you insight and inspiration. Satan masquerades as an angel of light. So it is no great surprise if his servants also masquerade as servants of righteousness. But their end will correspond with their deeds. I repeat then, let no one think that I'm foolish. But even if you do, at least accept me as foolish so that I may too boast a little. So Paul is going to explain a few things. Let's watch. Amplified. What I say in this confident boasting, I say not, I say not as the Lord would with his authority, but foolishly. Since many boast of worldly things and brag about human accomplishment, I will boast also. For you, being so wise, look what he's telling the Corinthians. You gladly tolerate and accept the foolish. You tolerate if someone makes you his slave. Because brothers and sisters on straight were made, were made slaves. Same thing that was happening to them in Corinth. You tolerate if someone makes you his slaves, devours you and your possessions. So what's going on in straightway? They've been made slaves and Dowell and those, those ministers and Pastor Mir and Pastor Corey and all those elders, they're doing what? They're making the people slaves and devours the people and your possessions and takes advantage of you. That's all sin. You should not allow it. It says, for you tolerate it? Why are you tolerating that? If somebody making you a slave and devouring you and your possessions or takes advantage of you or acts presumptuously or hits you in the face. So he he's the one that's acting presumptuous because to take all the people's money, their social security, their checks and demand this money from the people, you're presumptuous, you overstep the bounds. To my shame, I say, I must say, we have been so weak in comparison to those pseudo apostles who take advantage of you. So when somebody's taking advantage of you in the Bible, they're pseudo, they're fake, they're false. But in whatever anyone else dares to boast, I speak foolishly. I also, I also dare to boast. What do you say? Are they Hebrews? So am I. Are they Israelites? So am I. So they were Israelites that was taking advantage of people, making them slaves, using, using the gospel, making believers slaves, devouring them and their possessions and taking advantage of them. Brother and sister, they did that back then. And it's being pointed out as sin. You don't have to tolerate that. You got to leave. You got to pick up your family and you got to leave. You got to return to the Lord. You got to confess your sins. You have to ask the Lord to help you because you're in a prison house. You're not in a community. You're in a cult. In what? In straightway, period. Why are you tolerating somebody making you a slave and devouring you and taking your possessions? Let's read it. But you just gave it to them, right? Okay. Okay. Are they self-proclaimed servants of Christ? I'm speaking as if I were out of my mind. I am more. For I exceed them with far more labors, with far more imprisons, beaten without number, and often in danger of death. So Paul was exposing the pseudo. Keep that scripture in mind. I hope that edifies you. Okay, let's go up now. Let me check some comments. Mac. Phil and PhD said, Mac, we need right knowledge to command and govern our behavior. Eat Jesus Christ's body and drink his blood. We cannot live by bread alone, but only every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. So God's mouth. Okay. Amen. Okay. If knowledge is bad, the, see, right. Therefore, you see the knowledge that's being given to the people in straight ways bad and in these false churches. So therefore, what the conduct is going to be bad. Let me see here. They are dangerous because they harm the spiritual well-being of the community, the body of Christ, much like a wolf among sheep. So wolf among sheep, they, they harm the spiritual well-being of the people. 
Grievous woe symbolizes false teachers or leaders who would distort the teachings of Jesus, cause division, leading believers astray from true faith. So it's not straightway truth. The believers have been led astray from true faith. You're not in true faith. Brother and sister, they said that in one West that they were the home of the truth. But Jesus Christ, it said, the scripture said the law came by Moses, the grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. The truth is what Jesus Christ said, not straightway. When the scripture said you have to be established in the present truth, in the present truth of Jesus Christ. What does the gospel say? What does the word say? Let me see here. Let me scroll up. Yeah, this was this scripture right in 1 Samuel 18, and he will take your daughters. I mean, that was wickedness, man, but ain't no man no king now, brother. Ain't no man no king. That's done. That's it. All those things have been. That's just like just like there's no temple now. Ain't no man no king. Because Jesus Christ is king. God gave the throne of David unto Christ. So how could man still be using these techniques? It's all sin. It's all the conduct of a rejected person. Let me go up here. I'm gonna say grace and peace to everybody. Grace and peace to all the new people on the line. Um, I hope that you're edified. I hope you're stronger. I hope you're better informed. Okay, there's something I wanted to, before we go, let me get this for you. One moment. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm going to show y'all something this here, okay? Um, Nehemiah 5, okay, but let's, let's start from um, 1 Thessalonians 2, verse 7. Okay, let's go there. First Thessalonians 2, verse 7. And Spirefield, if you don't have to put it up, I'm just going to put it here. Bail me one moment. Okay, let's share this tab. First Thessalonians 2, verse 7. On the left side is the Amplified, on the right side is the KJV. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 7 to 12, what did the Apostle Paul said? It says, 2 verse 6, Nor of men sought we glory, neither of you nor yet of others, as we might have been burdensome as the apostles of Christ. Let me put it on the screen so you can see it. He said, Nor of men sought we glory, neither of you nor yet of others, as we might have been burdensome as the apostles of Christ. But we were gentle among you, even as a nurse cherisheth her children. So being affectionately desirous of you, we were willing to have imparted unto you not the gospel of God only, but also our own souls, because ye were dear unto us. For ye remember, brethren, our labor and travail. Listen to this here. For laboring, they were working. The apostle Paul said he was working. Sylvanius Timothy, they were working. For laboring night and day, because we would not be chargeable unto any of you. We preached unto you the gospel of God. Ye are witnesses in God also how holily and justly and unblameably we behaved among you that believe, as ye know how we exhorted and comforted and charged every one of you as a father doeth his children, that ye should walk worthy of God who have called you unto his kingdom and glory. Now let's go back up here. See this verse right here? Paul said we would not be chargeable unto any of you. He was not demanding the people's wages like it was happening in straightway. 1 Thessalonians 2 verse 9 in the Amplified, it said, Ye remember, believers, our labor and hardship. We worked night and day practicing our trade in order to be fun, in order not to be a financial burden to any of you while we proclaim the gospel of God to you. He was not a financial burden to any one of the people. Ye are witnesses, and so is God, how unworldly and just and blameless was our behavior towards you who believed in our Lord Jesus Christ. For you know how we exhorted and encouraged and imploring each of you, just as a father does in dealing with his own children, guiding you to live lives of honor, moral courage, and personal integrity, worthy of God who saves you and calls you into his own kingdom and glory. So Paul said he was not chargeable. Meaning you got to give me this money. Like what Dabble said. Give it a minute. 
Let's go here again. I'm going to go here one more time. Let me see. One minute. Mm -mm -mm. Give me one minute. Paul said he was not chargeable to them. He was not chargeable. No. He was not extorting the people of their money. He was not demanding money from the people like that. No, he wasn't. He said at my first answer, no man communicated with me concerning giving and receiving. He said, but ye only. Because only few people was communicating with Paul concerning giving and receiving. That is what the apostle Paul said. He said he was not chargeable. We're going to look it up in a minute. Give it a minute. I want to get this back for you. This meeting. Give me one second. Um, what period we want right here? We want the 18th minute. Let's look. Okay. Okay. Let's share this tab. Here we go. I get, for me, mm -hmm. 200 to $250 a month. How much do you give? Um, I'm giving them right now um, 2200 a month, over 2200 a month. And you get two hundred dollars a month. Yes, sir. For me, buying ice cream. <laughs> no. Sir. See, and he think it's a joke, right? But, but the brother Jamie said that Dawa was giving him a hundred dollars. So this is the same pattern that Rufus was following. <laughs> but anyway, but this is foreign. Y'all need to understand no. it. Y'all need to comprehend. See, We're not painting no picture. We just this is he's, just... he's lying that it's foreign. No, he's lying that it's foreign. They, they all con men. These two guys right here, these are all con men. They all come. They know it's not foreign. They know it's not foreign. Straight up reality. If you understand what I mean. Well, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. Listen hey, to this. Legit. I just got to community with Elder Crago. But I've been living around the Saints for five years. And it's he said he just got the community with Elder Crago, but he's been living around the Saints for five years. Listen carefully. Been preached to us that that's the motto. And these brothers have been given all for a very long time. And I was made to believe like 50 around the Saints for. Listen to this, brother and sister. Of reality. If you understand what I mean. So. So there's going to be a testimony right here that's going to refute what Dawa's going to say. Somebody's going to give a witness because he was acting like what Rufus was doing was, he was acting like what Rufus was doing. Hold on. Uh, bear with me one second. Let me fix this right here. Okay, give me one moment. Let me get this camera to come back in. Okay, one moment, one moment. Did she come back yet? Okay. Okay. We're waiting for the camera to come back. Okay, give it, give it a minute. Listen to this here. Oh, did we get that yet? Wait a minute. What's going on here? What's going on? What's going on? What is going on? Let me see one moment. It's private. Can you hear me? Okay. Let me see one second. Ah, uh, one moment, one moment. Oh, 
Okay, let's see. Okay. 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 Y'all give me one minute. Okay. Let's get one minute. Give me about 15 seconds. Hey, we legit. I just got the community with Elder Crago. But I've been living around the Saints for five years, and it's been preached to us that that's the motto. And these brothers have been giving all for a very long time. And I was made to believe like $50, $60, that should be your average allowance a week. Now, don't get me wrong. Listen, everybody gives all here. Right. I'm just, we're, we're talking about what they get back. Right, and what they receive back after when they give all, from what I've been hearing and witnessing from what the brothers tell me, is about $50, $60. Now, listen, bro, Victor, do you have enough money to be able to buy y'all seeing this? Y'all seeing this? You seeing this? I want y'all to see this. Around the Saints for five years, and it's been... He said he was around the Saints for five years. He said he was around the Saints for five years. You listening to this? He has been around the Saints, around the community for five years. Listen carefully. And preach to us that that's the motto. And it was preached to him that that's the motto. $50. You hearing? Listen, listen to what he's going to say. Listen, please. Straight up reality. The guy, somebody's going to refute the testimony of Dowell to his face. $2,200 a month. He's giving this guy's, this brother's giving $2,200 a month. And what's happening? You get two hundred dollars a month. Yes, sir. And he okay. get two hundred dollars a month. Buying the ice cream. <laughs> no, okay. <laughs> and he's making a joke buying any ice cream. Let's go. Anyway. But... Anyway, because that's the hustle. These are all con men. These are three men sitting down, looking at each other that they busted. It's all a con. Why? This is foreign. It's not foreign. He's he. I was gonna say this is foreign, but watch what somebody in the audience is gonna say. Y'all need to understand this. Y'all need to comprehend. We're not painting no picture. We just this is a straight up reality. You're not painting no picture. Watch them gaslight the people and bully them to their face. This is straight up reality. Watch what this brother's gonna say. Watch. If you understand what I mean. Okay. Well, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hey, we legit. I just got the community with Elder Crago. But I've been living around the Saints for five years. And he just got a community. He just got the community with Elder Crago. Go ahead. But he's been living around the community for five years. Listen to his testimony. Been preached to us that that's the motto. And these brothers have been given all for a very long time. And it's I been preached to us that that's the motto to get what? That you giving two thousand dollars and getting fifty dollars a week. This is what the guy said to Dowell's face. Did anybody miss that? This is what he said to Dowell's face, that this is the model. I was made to believe like $50, $60, that should be your average allowance a week. This is what he's saying. They taking everybody, they taking these brothers' salaries and making them think that $50 to $60 of your own money. Now, don't get me wrong. Listen, everybody gives all here. Right. So, so did he refute it? Did he refute it? Did he refute it? Oh, did, you, did he refute it? For a very long time. And I was made to believe like $50, $60, that should be your average allowance a week. Mm -hmm. Now, don't get me wrong. Listen, everybody gives all here. So he was exposed by somebody in his congregation. It's a fraud. It's a fraud. 
It's lies. It's deceit right to his face. It's been going on for years, not just with Rufus, that to get $50 a week is a standard in straight way. The guy said it to his face. Right. I'm just, we're, we're talking about what they get back. No, look, look, look at the scam. The guy is telling you he's only getting $50 back. Oh, you missed something, brother? Okay, I'm going to listen. Here we go again. Security, I get from. I would like to keep the RAM. And, and you need to keep the RAM. Because Elder Crago's got a heart big as Texas. And I told Elder Crago, straight up, I said, that man using you. Elder Crago got a heart big as Texas. But watch what they're going to say Elder Crago did. Watch. He is literally using you. And Ranger told him that too as well. Blood hurt. Out of my uh, disability check and my social security, I get for me mm -hmm. 200 to $250 a month. How much do you give? Uh, I'm giving him right now um, $2,200. He was giving Rufus $2,200 and only getting back what? $50 a week. A month. Over $2,200 a month. And you get two hundred dollars. Now watch, watch, watch. Dow will act like it's a it's a surprise to him, and then somebody in the congregation, in the group, is gonna show that Dow is lying to the people. Watch, as if what's going on in straightway is different. What's going on in Georgia? Listen, what he gonna say? Listen. Well, her out of my uh, disability check and my social security, I get for me mm -hmm. two hundred to two hundred and fifty dollars a month. How much do you give? Um, I'm giving him right now um, $2,200 a month, over $2,200 a month. And you get $200 a month? Yes, sir. For me. Buying the ice cream? Watch the <laughs> no, sir. See the joking? Watch the gaslighting. Gaslighting, anyway, watch. But this is foreign. He's, no, he's saying it's foreign. He's saying, okay, my, he's, uh, disability he's saying it's foreign. Security, Look, he's it. saying it's foreign, right? But watch. I'm going to let it play out. For me, mm -hmm. 200 to $250 a month. How much do you give? Uh, I'm giving him right now um, $2,200 a month, over $2,200 a month. And you get $200 a month? Yes, sir. For me. Buying the ice cream? <laughs> no, sir. <laughs> Inspiring Faith, can you put Leviticus 19.13? Leviticus 19.13, it's Leviticus 19.13, thou shalt not defraud thy neighbor, neither rob him. The wages of him that is hired shall not abide with thee all night until the morning. Again, Leviticus 19.13, thou shalt not defraud thy neighbor, neither rob him. The, see, they robbing the brothers. They are robbing the brothers and sisters at straight way. They robbing them. Here it is right here. Psalms 12, verse 5, for the oppression of the poor, for the sighing of the needy. Now will I arise, saith the Lord. I will set him in safety from him that puffeth at him, because the people are scared. James chapter, I mean, Amos chapter 4, verse 1. Hear this word of the Lord, ye kind of Bashan, that are in the mountains of Samaria, which oppress the poor, which crush the needy, which say to their masters, bring and let us drink. The Lord God have sworn by his holiness, that lo, the days shall come upon you that he will take you away with hooks and your prosody with flesh hooks and ye shall go out at the breaches, every cow at that which is before her and ye shall cast down, ye shall cast them down in the palace, saith the Lord. I'm reading from Amos chapter four, verse three. Come to Bethel and transgress. So when you go to straightway, you're learning how to transgress. At Gilgal, multiply transgressions and bring your sacrifices every morning and your tithes after three years. It was all about money. Amos. Y'all need to understand this. Y'all need to comprehend. He's saying it's foreign. He wants y'all to understand this. That's a lie. We're not painting no picture. We just This is a straight up reality. Okay, why are you saying you're not painting a picture? Because you are painting a picture. You're saying it's reality? Watch what somebody going to say to these two con men that's sitting on the side of him. Listen. If you understand what I mean. Okay. Look at that smug look on the two of them face. Y'all know y'all lying to the people. Watch. Well, hold on, hold on, hold on. Look, 
You give the person to the mic. Look at the Holy Spirit exposing your wickedness is being shown to the whole congregation. Listen, and you put this video out thinking you you exposing Rufus. You exposing you and Rufus. Hey, we legit. I just got to community with Elder Crago. But I've been living around the saints for five years, and it's been preached to us that that's the motto. He's, He's been living around the saints for five years, and it has been preached to them that they get $50 a week. And that was lying, as if it's rare what Rufus was doing. Brother's been given all for a very long time. Mind you, brother and sister, if, there's, if you got 10 people giving you $2,000, that's $20,000 being given a month. Look at all these people. They had like 35 people operating with. Look at the amount of money they were plundering and swindling the people of and that to, the, to what? To the detriment of their own families. Watch. A long, long time. And I was made to believe like $50, $60, that should be your average allowance a week. It was preached to him that $50 to $60 should be your average allowance a week. These brothers are slaves to Dowell. He's a master. That's taking advantage of the people. I was made to believe that fifty to sixty dollars. Y'all listening to this? Deuteronomy chapter twenty four fourteen. Thou shalt not oppress and hired servant that is poor and needy, whether he be of thy brethren or of thy strangers that are in thy land within thy gates. At his at his day. Thou shalt give him higher, neither shall the sun go down upon it, for he is poor and setteth his heart upon it, lest he cry against thee unto the Lord, and it be sin unto thee. So when you oppress people and take their money, and they cry it unto the Lord, like the brother Jamie was crying, it's sin unto Pastor Darwin and all these men. Sin. What did the Lord tell you? Rob not the poor. Because he is poor, neither oppress the afflicted in the gate. Proverbs 22, 22 and 23. For the Lord will plead their cause and spoil the souls of those that spoil them. So God is going to spoil the souls of those that spoiled his people. Okay, listen. Now, don't get me wrong. Listen, everybody gives all here. Right. I'm just, we're, we're talking about what they get for a very long time. And I was made to believe like $50, $60, that should be your average allowance a week now don't get me wrong listen everybody gives all here right i'm just we're we're talking about so look at his face look at the con face let me let me make the screen bigger look at the face of somebody gaslighting somebody look at the face of deceit look at all the men that's around him they know they're running a con they know it's a swindle. First, he was saying what happened with rufus was isolated and the brother came up and said this i've been, been around the community for five years and this is what's been going on $50 allowance to grown men is what goes on. Look at him. Looking like the con man Ariya. Look at him. Look at him. What they get back. Right, and what they receive. So look at him trying to gaslight him, what they give back. The guy is telling him the allowance is $50. He explained what he gets back. He gets back $50. See, this is when they try to confuse you. He knows what he's doing. That's the motto. And these brothers have been given all for a very long time. And I was made to believe like $50, $60, that should be your average allowance a week. Okay, so when you see, when you see the picture, when you see the picture of straightway, let me get the picture. When you see the picture at straightway, I tell you, man. When you see the picture straightway, you need to understand that they, the, the men there, this is what a witness in the congregation said. Look at how they're taking advantage of people. Yeah. Look at what's going on here. Let me get it for you. One moment. Hm. Tell you, boy. The wickedness got worse. They waxed worse and worse. This was like one West behavior. It's worse here. This is like what Central Command was doing with the oils. It's worse than here. Worse here. When you see this picture, let me get the picture. One moment. When you see the picture, you think it's a community of brothers and sisters. This picture right here.
Yeah, you think it's a community. Let me show you. You think it's a community. Look, you think it's a community. They luring you with debate. You think this is all love and brotherhood and friendship and fraternity. Now you're here in the private meeting. What's really going on? Okay? Now you're here in the private meeting. What's really, really going on? Mm -mm -mm. Wow. Okay. Here we go. Let me wrong. Listen, everybody it gives all here. Right. Mm -hmm. I'm just we're we're talking about what they get back. Right. And what they receive back after when they give all, from what I've been hearing and witnessing from what the brothers tell me, is about fifty, sixty dollars. Now listen. So, so see, that's what he, he's telling them. This has been the rule. This has been the rule. Now he's in straight way. This is what they've been doing. Watch. Brother Victor, do you have enough money to be able to buy clothes, shoes, any food you may want to have for the, the family to be able to provide for your children and your wife? Yes, sir. I have enough. You can't okay, so he said he got $50 and it's enough for his family and his wife because they relegated them to poverty, just like we read about with R.G. Steer. This brother's saying it's enough for him to have $50 a week for himself and his family. Are y'all hearing this? This is why, brother and sister, it's important for y'all to share the videos. It's important for y'all to shine the light. It's important for y'all to communicate your faith because look at what's happening to people and families that are being destroyed, that are being used, that are being taken advantage of. Provide for your family on fifty damn dollars or what? A week. So why is he lying? You see, he's gaslighting. And the brother was saying. The brother explained. This guy's just so wicked. The brother explained right here. Hold on a minute. Hold on a minute. Yeah. Yeah. He explained. What did he say? At the six minute. Let's get it right here. Don't forget this witness. Don't forget this witness right here. Don't forget this witness right here. It's. Pro there's no compassion there's no love mm -hmm. it's beat you down beat you down lose your voice he controls everything you do so what does it mean lose your voice meaning the lose you lose the voice in your head where you're dealing with total thought control you don't even think contrary to what the abuser said. You don't even think contrary to what the cult leader or Dowell says. It says you lose your voice. Even the voice in your head is silenced. The abuse and the churlish behavior is to destroy your gray matter where you can't make executive decisions for yourself. You lose the voice in your head. Oh, boy. Everything. Your family. He controls everything. Your family. What you get. How much money he gives you? <laughs> Check this out. I had a family of four. Family of four, mind you. A month, we would get a hundred bucks. Now, mind you, we had to buy four meals with this because mm -hmm. every Friday they didn't have, they didn't serve food in the dining hall. So you would have to supply four meals for yourself for the month. Mm -hmm. Any type of clothes, any products you need, anything like that came out of that money. That's what you had for a family of four. That's what I got. $100 a month. Hmm. Yeah. When I got there, he preached. Are you, he are you hearing? Down. Okay. Okay. Hmm. How I found out fast, <laughs> that wasn't the case for everybody. <laughs> Not at all. Definitely not for him. Definitely not for him. That's what I got to say about that. Okay, Definitely. good. So when you go back over here, when you go back here, you see you're being gaslighted, people are being lied to. You remember when you wanted to come down and um, talk to the brethren about talking to the soon to be on community brothers about you can't provide for your family on 50 damn dollars or what? But you gave, oh, but wait. you gave, but you, you gave, you me. gave, you gave Jamie a hundred dollars a month. You gave him twenty five dollars. This is all manipulation, brothers and sisters. 
Okay. Dang family for fifty damn dollars a week. Mm -hmm. You remember when you wanted to come down and um, talk to the brethren about? Okay. So brother and sisters, we gonna leave that right there. Don't need to comprehend. We're not painting no picture. We just this is a straight up reality. Okay. If you really? understand what I mean. Mm -hmm. Well, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hey, we legit. I just got to community with Elder Crago. But I've been living around the Saints for five years, and it's been preached to us that that's the motto. And these brothers have been given all for a very long time. And that's I the motto that the men give their whole salary and getting back $50 a week. That is the motto. That's what the brother's saying. And he's around Elder Crago. This is the same. This is what he's saying. This is what they're doing, brothers and sisters, to the brothers in straight where you see them dancing, you see them singing, but they're abused. But they're being taken advantage of. Before I leave that, let me go back over here. Before we leave this right here, I'm going to put this here. Let me see. 52, 56. Let me see. Give me one minute. Share this tab. I'm proud of you. Because it's hard to get through that. It is. It's very hard. He was silent for he was silent for over nine years. I just want to say thank you to Ringo and um, whoever else gets this out there. This is my experience what I had with Straightway Dow. <laughs> Um, and mind you, I'm talking about Dow, not the others. It's Dow. A man is wicked. I don't talk about bad about nobody. I try to hold my tongue because I know I ain't perfect. I still got growing to do. And I know, and I'm okay with that. And I don't mind it because once you learn your lessons, you can grow, you can move on and it makes you happy. It makes you become a better person, a better man, a better dad. I still teach my children, they're all grown. I have three children and I'm still teaching them to this day. Lessons, stuff I'm learning and growing. I'm still teaching them because I care. I care a lot. I care about people and I care about souls. And this man has hurt a lot of people, a lot of people, and he doesn't care. Okay. What what you say, brother? What are you saying? I want to see and I just don't want to see nobody feel like that no more or go through it. So, a lot of people, and he doesn't care. And this man has hurt a lot of people, a lot of people, and he doesn't care. Okay, brother and sister, that's what you see. Okay, so um, I shared it with you. Um, Y'all need to be wise. That's why he's being deceitful, how he handles the scriptures, how he used Acts chapter 2 and um, Acts chapter 4 to exploit the people and to take of them. And 2 Corinthians chapter 11 shuts that down. 
Okay, I'm going to show you this in the book of Nehemiah, chapter 9. Nehemiah was a governor during the rebuilding of the temple and Jerusalem. And I want to show you something that Nehemiah said in Nehemiah chapter 5. Okay, let's take a look here. Nehemiah chapter 5, King James Version is on the right-hand side. 5 verse 14. Moreover, from the time that I was appointed to be their governor in the land of Judah, from the 20th year, even unto the two and thir 30th year, which is 12 years, the king, that is 12 years, I and my brethren have not eaten of the bread of the governor. But the former governors that had been before me were chargeable unto the people. So when you read that Paul said, I was chargeable, I was not chargeable unto you. Do you understand this right here? Meaning, I did not require that from the people. Look at what's going on. When Paul is saying that, he was showing that he was a brother that had the spirit of God in him and that he was for the welfare of the people. He was for the benefit of the people. Because when you read in Nehemiah chapter 5, verse 14, he said, moreover, from the time that I was appointed to be a governor, remember David said, when I receive the congregation, I'm going to judge what uprightly. In the land of Judah, from the 20th year, even unto the 2 and 30th year of our taxes, the king, that is 12 years, I and my brethren have not eaten the bread of the governor. But the former governors that had been before me were chargeable unto the people and had taken of them bread and wine besides 40 shekels of silver yea even their servants bear rule over them but so did not i because of the fear of god and to show ne nehemiah feared god so he did not take the shekels from the people he did not take the bread and the wine from the people because he feared god because he knew it wasn't right showing you that the men in straightway don't have no fear of god Note this scripture, Nehemiah chapter 5, verse 14 down to 19. Consider this here, that in the rebuilding of the temple, they were considerate about the people's condition. Hear what he's going to say here. Ye also are continued in the work of this wall, neither brought we any land, and all my servants were gathered thither unto the work. Moreover, he said he didn't buy no land. Moreover, there were at my table a hundred and fifty of the Jews and rulers, besides those that came unto us from among the heathen that are round about us. Now that which was prepared for me daily was one ox and six choice sheep. Also fowls was prepared for me and one in ten days store of all sorts of wine. Yet for all this, yet for all this required not I the bread of the governor because the bondage was heavy upon this people. Why didn't he do that? Because the bondage was heavy upon the people. He said, think upon me, oh my God. Think upon me, my God, for the good according to all that I have done for this people. So Nehemiah is saying, I didn't take what other people took. I didn't, I, under the old covenant. He said, because the bondage was heavy upon the people. He said, think upon me, my God, for good, according to all that I have done for this people. Again, what the other governors was doing, he didn't follow the pattern of the other governors. So what you see Dawel doing, he's following the pattern of what? R.G. Stair and following the pattern of John Alexander Dowie. But look at Nehemiah. He didn't follow the pattern of the wicked governors that were before him. When he came in, it was a new day. He, he, brothers and sisters, he feared God and said, Lord, think upon me. Let me see right here. Okay, let me see. They got to be paying him. Okay, let me see that right there. Dowell's not refuting it. He's using weasel words to cover up his corruption. The man is giving over $2,200 a month. One person. Okay. And they're not only giving him, and they only give him $200 for his family, food, self-care, whatever needs, and your family madness. Rufus and those other so-called pastors allowed Dowell to use them as Judas goats. A Judas goat is a trained goat used in a general animal herding. The Judas goat is trained to associate with sheep or cattle, leading them to a specific destination. In stockyards, a Judas goat would lead sheep to slaughter. In stockyard, the Judas goat would lead sheep to slaughter while its own life is spared. Judas goats are also used to lead other animals to specific pens and onto trucks or to their deaths. 
The Judas goat is a betrayer who enters the flock as a sheep. However, their heart is that of a goat. A goat in the Old Testament was considered an animal of deception. The term is a reference to Judas is a chariot, a disciple of Jesus Christ who betrayed him. Showing you there, men, Rufus was doing the same thing too. Because you can, when you read about, if you go listen to what happened, the elders speak. I can show it to you again. He trashed Eric when he left. Trashed him. He said he was trash. Should I get it? Let me see something here. Should I get it? Let me see. One moment. If I can get the part where he said what he said about what he said about Eric, that he was trash. Yeah. That Eric was trash. Let me see. Oh, yeah. Give me a minute. Mm -mm. Let me see. Yep. Okay, let's go back here. Yeah. These guys are dangerous. Okay. Let me go back here. One moment. One moment. Uh, let me see. Okay. Okay, here we go. Yep. Here we go. Here we go. Let me share this tab. Okay. Give it a minute. Like some folk come and, and they need a father. And someone will be that father. Listen to this folk. madness. Someone level uh, of power. You know? I don't ever recall myself ever saying I'm the Moses of this generation. You a liar. I don't ever recall saying myself I'm the Moses of this generation. Go ahead. Oh, yeah, but, but anyway, he... Um, if that was one of the allegations or stuff. You know, many people. Go ahead, Elder. Many, many people feel that. They see that level of anointing. They see that. So look at him justifying that. Look at Judas. Look at, look at Rufus. Excuse me. Look at Rufus operating like a Judas goat, saying that many people see him, see him as a Moses of this generation. Watch this. You know, many people. Go ahead, Elder. Many, many people feel that. They see that level of anointing. They they, they feel what? Many people feel what? Uh, oh, yeah. but, but anyway, he um, um it, that was one of the allegations and stuff. Well, many people had. So just that simple. I don't ever recall myself ever saying I'm the Moses of this generation. You know? Look at how they look at uh, look at anyway, look at he, uh, look at Corey's face. Look at his face, him. Look at his face. They know he's lying. Watch. If that was one of the allegations and stuff. Because well, Eric said, Eric said that Dowell is not the Moses of his generation. He said I was an allegation. Listen. Go ahead, Elder. Many, many people feel that. They see that level of anointing. They see that level uh, of power. You know what I'm saying? So they see it and they say it. That's the best thing in the scriptures that they can equate it to. So, so he said many people see it that way. They see that level of anointing, and they 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 see. Look at how he's moving like a Judas goat. That's why Paul explained, brothers and sisters, he explained that he didn't want no man. Second Corinthians chapter twelve, verse six. For though I would desire to glory, I shall not be a fool. For I will say the truth. But now I forbear, lest any man should think of me above that which he seeth me to be or that which he heareth of me. So the Apostle Paul, they do not want nobody to think of him above that which they see him to be or that which they hear of him. Paul made sure that they did not come into the idolatry of him and he had the signs of an apostle and power and mighty wonders. This charlatan imposter, this pseudo false minister, Dowell don't have none of this, but listen to this. Look at this yes man in 
this brown nosing that's going on right here. Look at this fear of men. Listen to this. Oh, yeah. but, but anyway, he, um, um, it, that was one of the allegations and stuff. Well, many people have. Go ahead, Elvis. Many, many people feel that. They see that level of anointing. They see that level of, of power. You know what I'm saying? So they see it and they say it. That's the best thing in the scriptures that they can equate it to. They see that level of anointing. They see that level of power. Ambassador Everett, grace and peace, brother. Grace and peace, brother. <laughs> grace and peace to you. Grace and peace. Grace and peace. Thank you for your thank you for your input. Amen. Grace and peace to all you brothers and sisters. Grace and peace. Amen. Now let's look. Christ centered. See the brother said, what did the brother say? Risen with Christ ministries is committed, dedicated, and faithful to the proper context of the Holy Scripture. Risen with Christ ministry is clearly Christ centered. That's it. Over here, our knees bow and confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. What else? We bring into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Because it's not enough for you to bow your knees and don't bow your mind. That's why the scripture speaks about the humbleness of mind. Okay. Look at these Judas steers. A Judas steer, a Judas steer is a part of a cowboy's job during cattle drives to pick out a lead steer called the Judas steer. At the end of the trail, the Judas steer would lead the other cattle to slaughter with no hassle. If a particular good Judas was found, he was spared the meat hook and used again. So what happened with Rufus, he was spared and keep being used until what? Till he, till he went to question the man that he even thought was the most of his generation. As a Judas steer is a steer that leads other cattle or people to a slaughterhouse or their destruction. Listen to this. Listen to what? Listen to what Rufus is saying here. So that's not you out there self-reporting. Self Look at you gaslighting the people. Yes, it is him. Of power. You know what I'm saying? This is the direction that I'm going. And it's really just that simple. I don't ever recall myself ever saying I'm the Moses of this generation. Well, we recall you saying it. We recall you saying it, man. <laughs> you said it the other day that Moses ain't here. Take it up higher. Pastor Dowell is here. You confessed. And then Pastor Corey told Eric that what? That you are the Moses of this generation. And that's what you teach. Uh, uh, that was one of the allegations and stuff. Well, many people. Go ahead, Elvis. Many, many people feel that. They He's blaming the people. What the brothers said, like Paul, mark them which cause divisions and offenses contrary to the doctrine which ye have learned and avoid them. Now, when it says mark them which cause divisions and offenses contrary to the doctrine which we have learned and avoid them, contrary to the doctrine of the apostle Paul and Peter, not contrary to the doctrine of straightway, not contrary to the doctrine of a camp. Not contrary to the doctrine of Dowell. No, mark them which cause divisions and offenses contrary to the doctrine which you learned of the Lord Jesus Christ by the apostles and prophets according to the new covenant, the new and living way, the pillar and ground of truth, which is exemplified in walking in the integrity and upright according to the truth of the gospel, living a compassionate life, separating yourself from sinners, mortifying the deeds of the flesh, putting off the old man, putting on the new man, being born again, being converted with the washing of regeneration and the renewing of the Holy Ghost. If any man consent not to those words, they're proud and you got to mark them. You, you can't mark somebody when you leave a cult. The cult is marked. Okay. See that level of anointing? They see that uh, level. Of see how deceived Rufus was here? Their level of anointing. No, that's divination. See, when you have the ability to deceive the people the way Dawa deceived the people and R.G. Steyer and John Alexander Dawi and, and R.G. Lake and F.S. Bosworth and T.D. Jakes and Eddie Long, you have so, you're, so, you're a sorcerer. And what's happening is you're getting assisted by the demons where the people can't think aright. The people can't reason aright because you're a dementor. Your spirit is so shadowy that people are people are confused and their brain slows down because of the presence that's in you and the presence that's around Dao. How do these brothers err in like that? Because they're in captivity to the rulers of darkness. Now you know what the rule of darkness does to people. Watch this. Of power, you know what I'm saying? 
the power of Satan. That's why the Lord had to turn Paul from the power of darkness and from the power of Satan unto God. But he's dealing with the power of Satan. They see it and they say it. That's the best thing in the scriptures that they can equate it to. So that's not you out there self-reporting and self-advertising. Uh, 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 yes, it is. You lying for this man. You carrying his water. What are you talking about? That's not you self-reporting. Yes, it is. Because Paul said he corrected anybody that thought of him above that which was written. In 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 6. 1 Corinthians, the fourth chapter and the sixth verse, what does it say? What does it say? And these things, brethren, I have in a figure transferred to myself and to Apollos for your sakes, that you might learn in us not to think of men above that which is written, that no one of you be puffed up one against another. Let me read again. And these things, brethren, 1 Corinthians 4, verse 6, I have in a figure transferred to myself and to Apollos. To, to what? That ye might learn in us, learn from Paul and Apollos, not to think of men above that which is written. Don't think that men, this is Moses and this is Elijah, because they already came already. And they think this man is a Moses and a Elijah. Look at the spiritual confusion. It's time to be enlightened. It's how, how people feel. Like oh, it's it's and... how people feel. That's the demons. That's not how people feel. It's the demons. It's what you it's what you project into the people about yourself, the lie about yourself. And fathers. And someone will be that father figure for them. Someone may need a big brother or an uncle or, or a mother. That's what you call idealization, where, you, where they, they, pretend, they pretend to be a father figure or a brother. But Ariad did the same thing in One West. Same scam. They pretend to be something in order to get your substance. It's all scamming. It's all a hustle. It's all a con. They fit that role. You fit that role. So no, he fits that role. That's why he put you out. He fits that role. So he's trashing. Watch what he's going to say. Watch. He said that Dawah fits that role of a Moses and a father. But a father leaves an inheritance to his children. People say you're a prophet. People say you're a prophet. Look at this. Look at the lie they're carrying in their esoteric society. What's wrong with that? If that's what what's wrong with that? He ain't no prophet. That's what's wrong with it, brother. He's not a prophet. That's what you're saying. That's what he is to those individuals. That's what you were deceived into seeing. He's not that to no individual. That's what you're seeing. Now, he's a prophet. Y'all, we understand how that process comes up. But again, his word is not established. God did not establish him to be a prophet. Look at this. Look at the ghost face on Pastor Corey, because, you know, you were the one that telling people that this man is like a Moses and not a man going to pretend that he didn't say it to you. OK, good. How is it an accusation? Don't push it out there like, see, what you want to do is this. You want to diminish what's going on here. Here's see, you want to see, he said, How is it an accusation? Because that's what they were teaching. So later on, when Rufus complains about Dawah acting like he's a king, brother, you was acting like this guy's a prophet and like Moses. Oh, come on, man. I'm, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to jump. No, go ahead. This stuff frustrates Elder Rufus. I'm glad we got Ellen. He said, This stuff frustrates Elder Rufus that, that Eric Robinson, which was one of their elders, left. This stuff frustrates him. And then, wh what are you going to say, brother? Because you got the compassion of people when you left, but how did you treat Eric when he left? Pastors that sheep up, because y'all can speak well for the folks. I, I don't have patience for the people. Buy good riddance, so the hell on, get out. He said, okay, buy good riddance, go to hell on, get out. What you said, man? What did you say? I'm glad we got elegant pastors that sheep up, because y'all can speak well. For you glad you got elegant pastors and they laughing. Go ahead. Because how would you handle it? How would you handle it? Um, Rufus, oh, I, I don't have patience for the people. You don't have patience for the people. You didn't have. You don't have no patience to deal with the situation with Eric Robinson. Go ahead. Buy good riddance, so the hell on, get out. Buy you know good riddance, go to hell on, get out. What? Oh, so you mean to tell me what 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 Dawa did to you? Oh, that's what you used to do. Oh, we got you. Okay. I'm glad we got. It. Elegant passes that sheep up because y'all can speak well for the folks. I, I don't have patience for these people. Buy good riddance, so the hell off, get out. You never were with us in the first place. But mm -hmm. here it is. You have these things going on. You want he said that Eric that left them was never with them in the first place. Okay. Oh, you got a lot of repenting to do, brother. Compare yourself to the man of God that's been chosen 
You, why would how, why would Eric compare himself to the man of God that has been chosen? This is what you call being a sycophant, a yes man, a man pleaser, and when you're blind, this is stuff that you're saying. I know about it. I've been there. All of us in to this way, right? Look at the fruit. When he left, he's well surpassed anything that was before him. The bishop. The, the prophet in RG there. What he's bishop, saying, he calling he, he, that that thou will surpass the bishop and the prophet in RG there. RG there was a false prophet. Look at the lie that's taught that thou will teaches the men that this guy was a prophet. Why you didn't correct him, thou? Oh, okay, because y'all. Oh, okay, you you. Oh, you his successor. We got you. Okay. All right. Okay. He's doing this going well beyond what they. Because do. you deceive evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. Um, it says, broad is the way and great is the path that lead to destruction. Not because you have more people drinking the same lie of R.G. Steele, John Alexander Dowie. Not because you have more people following you. The scriptures tell you, man, many can come in my name saying, I am Christ and shall deceive many. That's what he's a fulfillment of. Do you have the testimony? The ones that are offended, the ones that are put aside, the ones that walk away, and you say, well, straight ways this, and they do this, they do that. Show me your fruit. Show me. See, this is this is Rufus. This is Rufus under the spell of Pastor Dowell before he came out. Okay. How you have surpassed what Straightway has done. Show mm -hmm. me you even on a trajectory. Okay. To do it. No, the scripture was very, very clear about this. Go ahead. They're gonna come together, but it ain't gonna last. Okay, so you think you think coming when people assemble outside of um straightway, that's what you believe at that time? This is this is the Kool-Aid. This is Kool-Aid right here. Kool-Aid. This is the Jim Jones stuff. Yeah, a few hundred here. But it ain't gonna last. We've okay. seen this before. You say this stuff all the mm -hmm. time, Pastor. We've seen you before. We've seen this before. You can make this. I ain't even seen the video. I haven't seen their video. Okay. I know it's a piece of crap, uh, trash. I know it's a piece of crap. I already know it. You said you didn't see the video. You said it's what? What did you say, brother? What did you say? Wait, wait, wait. What did you say, brother? I thought I thought God said, wait a minute. I thought God said you didn't sort that which was driven out. You said the brother's video was a piece of what? His complaint about why he left was a piece of what? What did you say? Say it again. All the time, Pastor. We've seen you before. We've seen this before. You can make this. I ain't even seen the video. I haven't seen their video. I know it's a piece of crap. Uh, trash. I know it's a piece of crap. I already know it. People follow me. They in that same he knows a piece of a piece of trash. People following you, okay. This is the like you said. You building them. You trying to build a ministry off of another man's work. So what's oh. happening? Is he's being remote controlled. Dowell is remote controlling him and act like these brothers are speaking for themselves. They're just echoing his feeling. I've been there. They just being remote controlled. That's why the Lord said, "Come out from among them and be ye separate," because they're being remote controlled. He's the rule of darkness, and they're the servants of his darkness. They're not even thinking for themselves. Another man's work. You didn't go out mm -hmm. and videos and folks say, you know what? That's the man of Yah. Let me go see him. Mm -hmm. Let me mm -hmm. get straight away. Let me get around okay. those people. That's not what that is. You getting degenerates. You getting disobedience. Okay, that's what they that, that's what they, that's what they're saying about him now. That when we when you leave, anybody talking to you is a degenerate. Now look at all the men that's co-signing this. And brother and sister, this is the stuff that we tell you about a cult. If you want to see cult tactics and cult behavior, this is what you're seeing right here. Let me go to the comments. Let's see. Because we're done with this right here. Um, next week we're gonna go into their doctrine. Okay, we're gonna go back to our regular classes, and I'm gonna do classes about their doctrine, and we're gonna pull, we're gonna show you that. Straightway is a stronghold of Satan. We're going to show that they, they, they blaspheme in the gospel of Christ. They're not in the gospel. They're not in the faith. And they're in another gospel. We're going to show it next week by the grace of the Lord. Remember, Paul said he was not chargeable to anybody. That's what he said. Meaning, I seek not yours with you. Brothers and sisters, these things are for our learning. It's a warning. Look at how he's handling the word of God deceitfully. That's why Paul said we've renounced the hidden things of dishonesty, not walking in craftiness, nor handing the word of God deceitfully, but by manifestation of the truth. Look at how the brothers have been defrauded and they have been robbed. Look at how you see men right here that they actually using guile and making gain of people and buying trucks and vehicles and leaving the men relegated to poverty and making them think that poverty and them giving all their money to this con man Dowell is a sign of faith. No, it's a sign of a zeal that's not according to knowledge.
It's not a sign of faith. It's a sign of zeal that's outside of knowledge. Okay? Let me scan the comment section. I'm going to tell y'all grace and peace. We went longer than I want. I anticipated. I started a little late. Um, I'm going to break this right here. Yeah. Look at how, right. I mean, the Lord said, I'll be a swift witness against the sorcerer and those that oppress the hireling in their wages. So in Malachi, the Lord speaks about them oppressing the hireling in their wages and fear not me, showing that thou and none of these men fear God. Because to take my man's money like that, man, that means you don't fear God. Yeah. Look, at Rufus is now dealing with a reaping. My goodness. Yeah. For what he said and what he promoted. Now he's on the other end. Pray that he's born again and converted. And he was the warfare. Okay, let me see here. Let me see. Okay. All right, brothers and sisters, Um, we dealt with it. Okay. Um, Paul said, receive us. We have wronged no man. We have taken advantage of no man. When you look at the word, look at take advantage, you can see in 2 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 1 to 3, Paul said, we have wronged no man. We corrupted no man. We have defrauded no man. You see in what's happening in straightway ministries, people are being defrauded. People are being corrupted. And people are being wronged and taken advantage of. Brothers and sisters, come out from among them and be ye separate. Everybody should be leaving straightway all over the world. But I bid you Godspeed also, my brother. Amen. Amen. And I pray that you brothers and sisters will be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. You're not alone in this. The Lord Jesus says, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, I will give you rest. I mean, I will give you the refreshing. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. For I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is what? Is light. The Lord is not requiring you to give your whole paycheck to somebody or have you become a slave. The Lord also told you, thou shalt not rule over thy Hebrew brother in, with rigor, nor bring him into bondage. These brothers are in bondage, and they think it's the bondage of the Lord. No, that's wrong. That's improper understanding. You're being exploited in straight way. And this was happening everywhere. People making people give up their whole social security. Rufus and his compatriots seated alongside bear witness to the grim reality that Dowell, the insidious religious predator and manipulator, oh, the agony has abandoned though, oh, the, oh, the agony has abandoned those beguiled souls. Father and sons alike to the churches of the malevolent mercenary Dowell, destined for the sacrificial altar of his vile scheme. So when you in straightway, you are destined to the sacrificial altar of his vile schemes. Because when God said, you shall know them by their fruits, it ain't talking about land. It ain't talking about homestead. It ain't talking about militarization. That's not what it's talking about. It's talking about by your character, by your conduct, by your manner of life. As Paul said, by pureness, by knowledge, by love on fame, by the arm of righteousness on the right hand and the left. Paul said, I've defrauded no man. I've coveted no man's silver and coveted no man's gold. Know him by his fruits that he was gentle among them. He said, I beseech you by the meekness and gentleness of Christ. What's the opposite of the meekness and gentle? The rude. The churls, that's the opposite. The railers, the revilers. So Paul is showing you, you shall know them by their fruit. You, when you see the, when you see wheat and chaff, what does wheat do? Wheat bows when it, when wheat comes to, to to harvest, it bows. You see, men say that they're the seed of Christ, but they don't bow to the word because they're not wheat. They chaff, and it takes time for you to identify the wheat from the chaff. They chaff. Because if they were weak, they would bow to what Jesus Christ said and live their life according to the truth of the gospel. We pray you, brothers and sisters, are edified. We pray you, brothers and sisters, have learned. We pray you, brothers and sisters, are, are encouraged to look at the word, look up, look into the word, be quickened, be edified, be reformed, be corrected, be saved, be built up in the most holy faith, grow in grace in the knowledge and in the knowledge of the Son of God, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Be born again, be converted, be loving. Okay, I'm going to say the prayer. One moment. Mm. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your majesty. We thank you, Lord. You said you would seek for your sheep in the day when you're among them. We thank you, Lord, that you're the, you're the redeemer and that you're turning again the captivity of your people, Lord. And whom the Lord called, he also predestinated. Whom he predestinated, 
he also justified and whom he justified, he also glorified. We thank you, the Lord, you're calling us to the gospel. We thank you, Lord, for giving us a spirit of indignation where we can feel the displeasure of about wrongdoing, the displeasure at exploitation, that we can see, Lord, the errors that we have made and the errors that other men are making with, with your word. We desire, Lord, to be one with you. Heavenly Father, we pray, Lord, according to your mercy and grace, that you may strengthen the brothers and sisters that are struggling and wandering in this dark and cloudy day, and that you may draw them to you, Lord. You said with loving kindness, you have drawn them. Draw them with your loving kindness. Let them discern that when a man is churlish and rude and villainous and impolite and lacking social graces, that is not the fruit of your spirit. Let them be able to discern between good and evil between him that serveth God and him that serveth them not. And may man and woman and children be called to the beauty of our Lord Jesus Christ and the majesty of our God. In Jesus' mighty name we pray, Lord. Amen and amen. Paul spoke that may all men see. Brother and sister, may you see. We hang late tonight. I'm going to tell you our grace and peace. And I'm going to start by the grace of the Lord. I'm going to start hitting this by 7 o'clock. Okay, no matter what's going on, I'm gonna try to hit this by seven o'clock or I'm gonna have to do a pre record. I have to. Okay, I don't want you, brother and sister, to be up so late. I know y'all have work, some of y'all have work tomorrow. And um, so I do apologize for that, but I didn't want to put off the class for another day. Okay, I'm gonna tell y'all grace and peace. Remember, you see, I put the comment there, I put the, the link. If somebody wanted to contest, brother and sisters, no, God is not requiring of you to give your whole paycheck to nobody every week, every month. What is that, man? That's fraud. That's when a man is chargeable. And Paul said, I was not chargeable to you. Dowell's valiantly trying to rehabilitate and launder his reputation with his redemptive tours on social media, which further demonstrates that his biblical knowledge is as deep as ketchup on a sandwich. Yeah. His biblical knowledge is surface, surface. That's why he went over there to get an interview because he's laundering his reputation because he wants the eyes of the people to be towards him. But the eyes of the people are supposed to see Jesus only. And if you'll see Jesus only, then you'll be able to judge righteously. Again, if you see Jesus only, only then will you be able to judge righteously and your heart got to be turned to the Lord. OK, but listen, I learned I suffered it. The Lord said he came to recover the recovering of sight to the blind and to proclaim liberty to the captives. We do not have to be under the spell of any man that's holding the Bible in their dishonest ways. Okay. But that's it by speaking the truth in love. That we may grow up unto him in all things, which is the head, even Christ. I'm going to tell y'all grace and peace. I love you all. Okay. If you want to speak with me, risen with Christ ministries at gmail.com born again, Israelites at gmail.com. Okay, um, I didn't want, I wanted to do this short. I really would like to have done this in an hour and a half. Um, but I didn't want to put it off for another day. I could have condensed it. I could have bridged it. But I pray that you brothers and sisters are blessed and you know, don't have, nobody don't have the right to do that. If you're going to give to a ministry, you're giving out what? According as every man purpose in their heart. Again, it says according as a man purpose in their heart. That's how it works. When Paul said that um, the brethren at Macedonia came, they came out of their own love for Paul. They came out of their own love for the different ministers. That's what they did. But they were not chargeable. Paul, Timothy, Sylvanus was not chargeable to the people. So what you see right now with Pastor Darwin and these other ministers, give me your W-2 form. That's all sin. That's all ungodliness. They're robbing you. Don't be robbed. Be charitable. Be loving. Give to the godly. Support the ministry, but make sure it's the ministry of Christ. Okay? If you want to speak with me, 347-384-5154. If you have any questions, you can speak to me at bornagainisraelites at gmail.com. If you want to support the ministry, um, Risen with Christ um, is the cash app, and the PayPal is Risen with Christ Ministries at gmail. Okay? Um, I seek not yours. I'm seeking you, brothers and sisters. It's about the answers. Because when you know the truth, the truth makes you free. You don't feel bad about not following a minister of Satan. Just like the one West elders were, just like you see Yahweh Ben Yahweh, Ben Ami, Eddie Long, R.G. Lake, F.S. Bosworth, John um, Alexander Dowie, just like they were ministers of Satan, 
And just like Parham, just like all these men got the Bible talking about love and at the same time they're racist and or they're covetous. Alexander Dowie, I wanted to read this, so I'm going to give it to you real quick. John Alexander Dowie, his influence, they, they try to call him God's general. It was built on lies and deceit. He claimed to possess special powers. This is during what? This is during the early 1900s. John Alexander Dowie claimed to possess special powers of healing, convincing vulnerable individuals to believe in his divine authority. So when people try to, they feign to have special powers of healing, they want you to believe in their divine authority. In reality, his so-called miracles were nothing more than illusions designed to dupe the desperate into giving him their money and devotion. This is in the 1900s this hustle was being ran. Okay? In the 1900s, there was a hustle being ran by John Alexander Dowie. Okay, exploiting the vulnerable. Dowie preyed upon, this is from Maccabus. The other one I read was the research done by Indigo about R.G. Stair. This is from Maccabus. Exploiting the vulnerable. Dowie preyed upon the sick and suffering, promising them relief from their ailments in exchange for their loyalty and financial support. He targeted those who were at their most vulnerable, manipulating their faith and trust to line his own pockets. Countless individuals fell victim to his schemes, believing that they that he held the key to their salvation. So countless individuals fall victim to who? Just like Dowell's schemes, just like R.G. Stairs' schemes, Morris Cirillo's schemes, Eddie Long's schemes, T.D. Jake's schemes, Cliff O'Dollar's schemes, um, Ariar's schemes, Lahab's schemes, One West schemes, Marshall's schemes. In the Tyrant of Zion, in Zion City, Dowie ruled with an iron fist, squashing dissent and opposition at every turn. He used fear and intimidation to maintain his grip on power. Same thing Dowie does. Crushing anyone who dared to question his authority. And that's why what? That is why Rufus was put out of the organization, put out of the clan, out of the cult, because he questioned his authority. Those who spoke out against who? John Alexander Dowie. That's what we're talking about right now. John Alexander Dowie. Let me put him on the screen so you can see him. This guy here, the progenitor of R.G. Steer. Put this guy up on the screen. Put him on the screen, Brother Karadaza. Who are you talking about? You brothers, y'all need this information because these, this wickedness has a root. Okay? It has a root. Here we go. Okay, here we go. This guy right here. Brothers and sisters, beware of the mask of the narcissistic altruist, altruism, a deception in the guise of benevolence. In the theater of empathy, a new player emerges cloaked in the deceptive attire of altruism, yet tainted with the poison of self-adoration. We confront today a phenomenon so insidious, so treacherous, it threatens the very fabric of genuine compassion, the grotesque masquer masquerade of the narcissistic altruist. Narcissistic altruism is not a friend to the needy, but a parasite upon their suffering. It feasts upon the vulnerabilities of others, exploiting their plight for their own aggrandizement. Oh, the cruelty of its deception, wrapping itself in the noble garb of compassion. So what altruistic narcissists do, they make you feel, see, I gave to you, I help you, but they don't, you don't know. Their give is a pimp's give. Their give is to make you emotionally indebted and you end up being a slave like what pimps do to women. It ain't a loving give. It's not a genuine give. It's a seducing give. To exploit you for their own aggrandizement. Rufus gave them 12 years and he tossed them out like he was garbage. For questioning his authority. Because in the demonic reign, in the demonic realm, Satan cannot be questioned. Neither can his ministers. They will cast you out. But the scripture said, your brethren that hated you, they cast you out for my name's sake. He shall appear to your joy and they shall be ashamed. If you cast out for, because you stood for what Jesus Christ said, 
He going to appear to your joy and they all going to be ashamed. The last thing I want to read, John Alexander Dowry, the man on the screen, this altruistic narcissist, him, this is what we're talking about. This, meaning what? He was doing the things that R.G. Stairs doing, coming, you got to come into his compound and live in this land next to me and he controls your money. We're going to read about it. The tyrant of Zion. In Zion City, Dawi ruled with an iron fist, squashing dissent and opposition at every turn. He used fear and intimidation to maintain his grip on power, crushing anyone who dared to question his authority. Those who spoke against him were ostracized and vilified. This is in the 1900s. Okay, their voices silenced by the ruthless tyranny, living a life of luxury while his followers struggled to make ends meet. Like Jamie said, he couldn't even buy soap while his followers struggled to make ends meet. Another brother, Elder Mitchell, said from, from straightway that he didn't have the equipment, so he was digging holes with his hands. They were digging the dirt with their hands. What kind, what, what, what kind of, what, kind, what is that? That's not dedication, that's abuse. While his followers struggled to make ends meet, Dowie lived a life of opulence and excess. He used their hard-earned money to fund his extravagant lifestyle, indulging in luxuries while they scraped by. His lavish spending knew no bounds as he surrounded himself with the trappings of wealth and power, all obtained through deceit and manipulation. Jamie said that while he was looking, struggling to have soap and while he was there from 2011 to 2015, during that period, um, he said that Dawa was buying what? Wine cellars. Okay, leaving a legacy of destruction, John Alexander Dowie, Dowie's actions left a trail of destruction in their wake. 1900s. As countless lies were shattered by his greed and deception, families were torn apart, communities were divided, and faith was shattered beyond repair. His name became synonymous with betrayal and deceit, a cautionary tale of the dangers of blind faith and unchecked authority. Brother and sister, you cannot have blind faith and operate unchecked authority. John Alexander Dowie confirmed involvement in unethical behavior paints a chilling picture of a man consumed by his own greed and ambition. His story serves as a stark reminder of, his, of the dangers of placing blind trust in charismatic leaders and the devastating consequences that may result from unchecked power and manipulation. Dowie's legacy is one of deception and destruction, a cautionary tale for generations to come. His healing claims. He said he would heal numerous diseases. He said he would heal numerous diseases. Well, okay, can I share this? Let me share this. Okay. Share this tab. Okay, I'll share this. He said he would heal numerous diseases. Okay. You seeing this? Here we go. He said he would heal numerous diseases. Mm -mm -mm. Okay. He also claimed that he would resurrect people and asserted to have done so multiple times to multiple women. When newspaper reporters tried to witness these miracles, he denied them access, begging for money. He claimed that all expenses were out of his personal money and hard work. That's what Dawa says. And he asked and he asked and begged the people for money. He suggested that if they did not comply, they would be unfaithful and unfavorable towards God and will be looked down upon. Many people think if you don't give money the straight way, you'll be looked down upon by God. This is a con man. It's not a minister. Mental stability. When a medical physician examined the situation, he expressed great concern about Dowie's mental health. He also said Dowie's, Dowie, Dowie's ego was so large, he could not be in touch with, could not be in touch with reality. Dowie himself started to believe he could perform these miracles with the help of God. People who, people who tragically threw away their crutches were not cured. For instance, a man suffered from hysterical paralysis, worked up a sense of frenzy by Dowie's words, would stir up all the energy that he had and would somewhat walk. However, when the surge of emotion and energy came to a halt, he would once again be paralyzed and in even worse condition than before. Similar things happened with other conditions as well. Threats. Though he often slung insults at local ministers and newspapers, he claimed 
that if ministers would not join him, he'd use a weapon that God had given him to punish them. He specifically targeted Methodist Episcopal clergy, saying the members of the lame Methodist Episcopal clergy have been our warmest friends. But everywhere we have found the ministers and the denominations, simple slaves to conferences, residing elders and bishops. After one Methodist Episcopal clergyman named F. D. Boyard claimed that Doby was a liar, a cheat, and an imposter. Doby said, I denounce him and prophesied he would be punished. Today, F. D. Boyard is dead and buried under the sod. He died, and I stand before God as a witness that he was a liar. Doby emphasized that the man was dead so much that many in the meeting grew tired and left. The information you provided that's provided is from the following sources the messed up church you see the notes right there there doe founded a city of in zion illinois where he personally owned all the land doe owned all the land and established many businesses the operations of the city have been characterized as a carefully devised large-scale platform for securities fraud his lieutenant initiated an investigation of the business practices and disposed him from the leadership in 1905. Doe was given an allowance until his death. The rest of the information is from informative videos, Doe's own biography and newspapers about him during the time. Okay, this is Machiavelli's research on it. Also, and then Doe started introducing, he started introducing polygyny, polygamy, into this organization. Sounds sounds um, sounds familiar? Okay. So brothers and sisters, you have the information. The things written for time are written for our learning. There's a pattern to sin, there's a pattern to righteousness, and you have to know there's a difference. Okay? Max said, what's PhD? So true, we have to pass the baton to the next runner in the race so that they can too, can become aware and make aware all the saints in the race. So you gotta arm your children. Saints, share so all can be aware of this war being waged against the body of Jesus Christ. Amen. Okay, I love you all. I'm going to tell you our grace and peace. It might take you a little, a little while to go through this, but get the information. Okay? It was a lot that I tried to put in one sitting, and I pray that the sacrifice um, is for your benefit, and you brothers and sisters are wiser. And you're not deceived by these false teachers. Um, next time I'm going to I'm going to show you the parts about their doctrine that is a total false doctrine that you're dealing with in straight way, and it's a doctrine that all devils use. Okay. Um. Again, Alexander Dowie. One of the things that he also did is this. He's the one that brought into the movement into the. He he's the one that brought. Let me get it for you, right? He's the one that started collecting tides. Because the other minister were not collecting tithes. He's the one that made a big move. That's how he collected all that money. He started charging the people, making people paying tithes. Although he know we under the new covenant, he was the one that was using the fraud collecting, fraudulently collecting tithes because he don't have a commandment from God to take tithes to the people. And neither does any man in this day. And man is using the tithing, the tithing law to, as, man is using the tithing law to extort the people. And brothers and sisters, you don't have to be extorted anymore. If you give to someone that's teaching you sound doctrine, you're giving of your own free will. The law tells you in the New Testament that do, to do good and to communicate, forget not, for with such sacrifice the Lord is well pleased, and let him that is taught in the Lord communicate unto him and teach him in all good things. Meaning, if y'all, since y'all family, y'all learning in the word, the scripture said, thou shalt not muzzle the ox that tread after corn. And I'm, again, if the scripture said, thou shalt not muzzle the ox that tread after corn, how they had brothers working in dirt and working in farm and working with chickens and they were muzzled. That was all sin. I'm going to tell you all grace and peace. Brothers and sisters, the knowledge. Arm yourself likewise with the same mind. You got to arm yourself with the knowledge of the gospel so that you don't be led like sheep to the slaughter. And I pray that the Lord will heal the brothers that have come in contact with straightway ministries and all these other charlatan, dishonest men that's masquerading as disciples of Christ or ministers and pastors, we pray that y'all healed. Amen. That's right, Brother Everett. Shekels of silver money was never a tithing commodity. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. 
But remember, see, and what people don't understand, when Tobit, when you read about this in Apocrypha, when Tobit took some funds and he brought it, he brought money to Jerusalem to spend with the people. But the shekels and the, this was never about getting your money. No. But they turned it into money. That's why it said you made the house of God, what? A den of thieves. So they sliding around each other like snakes, looking who they're going to take advantage of. Okay? So your success in the harvest, you were supposed to bring it and share it with the priest. It was never about the money. That's why God said, come get bread and water without money and without price. Isaiah 55, come get bread and water without money and without price. Is that what it says? That takes down the whole entire straightway ministries. It says, Isaiah 55, verse 1, Ho, everyone that thirsteth, come ye to the waters, and ye that hath no money, come ye buy and eat, ye come buy and come buy wine and milk without money and without price. Why do you spend money for that which is not, that ain't the bread? And your labor for that which satisfieth not. Hearken diligently unto me and eat that which is good and let your soul delight itself in fatness. Because the gospel of Jesus Christ is the fatness. That's the wealth. That's the success. That's the fortune. Listen, Paul said we have this treasure in earth and vessels. That's where the treasure is. And the Lord said, if you will seek him and seek to understand the treasure of the gospel, all things will be added unto you. I love you all. I'm going to tell you grace and peace. <laughs> without money and without price. So like these verses down, Jeremiah 22, 13, doomed is one who builds his house by injustice and enlarges it by dishonesty who makes his people work for nothing. You know that Jeremiah 22, Jeremiah chapter 22, that's in the GNT version, can be read it in the MSG. Doomed to him who builds palaces, but bullies people who makes fine houses for himself, but destroys lives, who cheats his workers and won't pay them for their work. Tell him it's a contribution. Oh, really? Who says, I build me an elaborate mansion with spacious rooms and fancy windows. I'll bring in rare and expensive woods and the latest in the interior decor. So that makes you a king living in a fancy palace. Your father's got along just fine, didn't he? He did that. He did what was right and treated people fairly and the things went well with him. He stuck up. He stuck up for the down and out and things went well for Judah. Isn't this what it means to know me? God's decree. But you're blind and brainless. All you think about yourself, all you think about is yourself taking advantage of the weak, bulldozing your way, bullying victims. And that's what you see in straight way that. Pastor Dawa and his ministers, they bulldoze their way. They're bullying. They're bullying. They are bullying victims. What is that? That is wickedness. Yeah. Pastor Dawa is a tyrant who dictates over those who are ignorant of the proper context of the Holy Scriptures. Absolutely, brother. Pastor Dawa is the pastor of the Crooked Way Ministries. Powell, Powell, um, pastor Powell is a, is a, a pastoral hireling. He doesn't care for the flock. He is a very crooked man. Yeah. Read in the comments. Okay. Yeah, the brother asked, does he pay taxes? That's another issue he didn't think about. A hireling. A person who serves for hire, especially for purely mercenary motives. A person who serves for purely material reward, serving merely for pay and sordid advantage. Venal, greedy, acquisitive, avaricious, avid, coveting, covetous, grabby, grasping, greedy, money grabbing, rapturous. That's why you heard Rufus say, man, that all oh, we should just you should just take the money. See? That's hiring behavior, man. So all of y'all. Y'all can't be, listen, even Pastor, Ru, even Rufus is, was a hireling. That was all corruption. It, it was all fraud they were part of. He's not no pastor. What Dawo did, Dawo promoted them so they can agree with him and make them part of what? You can get, you can get, you, you can get a cut of the, of the exploitation of the people if you join me. That's what it was really going on. 
Okay. Let me see here. Let me see. Yeah, David Koresh stuff. Yep. Yep. Absolutely. Okay, I'm just scrolling up. All right, good. Okay. So remember, Nehemiah came for the welfare of the people. Nehemiah said he was not chargeable to the people because the people were in what? They were in affliction. They were in heavy bondage. So compassion makes you move differently. When you're dealing with a man that don't have no compassion, you can see these kind of behaviors. Again, massively mighty, my brother Karadazar, setting the captives free. No compassion for the sheep. Jesus Christ had compassion on the people, not willing to send them away empty. So very sad. So the Lord didn't send them away empty. He said, they can they were with me three days and they have eaten nothing. No, I can't send them away empty. I Meaning, look at the compassion. Okay, so brothers and sisters, I hope, I hope, I pray that um that all men may see that God's love in the gospel does not does not does not exploit or take advantage. It's for your benefit, it's for your blessing. The apostle Paul said, It's more blessed, the Lord taught, it's more blessed to give than to receive. The ministry is giving to the people. It's not exploiting the people. I'm going to tell y'all grace and peace.